What's up guys Chaos Shinobi here. This is what if Naruto has a mystery dojutsu. Summary, Naruto Uzumaki, the son of Minato and Kushina, is a few Injutsu prodigy with a mysterious dojutsu giving him incredible genjutsu prowess. Searching for an explanation of his eerie eyes, and a place to belong at the same time can the Jinchuriki find what he is looking for, or will the evils lurking in the shadows consume him? Chapter 1 It was another regular day for Naruto running from the villagers, attempting to fend for himself in Konoha. It is tough for an eight-year-old to survive when he is hated and hunted by his village. His stubborn refusal of help from the Sandaime didn't make his situation any easier either, man, it would be nice if I could just get some spices in peace once in a while. All this evasion isn't really my thing, but the Hokage doesn't like it when I use my abilities. What can a guy do I guess? Muses Naruto as he ducks into a dark alley with a bag containing his required herbs and spices he can't find outside the village. I best get outside the wall before the villagers spot me again. And with that, the young boy took off for the wall, eager to get back to his cave outside the confines of Konoha. Naruto Uzumaki was a self-proclaimed recluse. Upon discovering his resident within his mindscape when he was six, he had brought it up with the Sandaime. Hiruzen. Flashback. Hiruzen was sitting in his office working on the bane of his existence when he heard a much needed distraction, in the form of a knock, on his door. Enter. He replied and to his surprise a young red-headed boy whom he knew very well entered his office. What can I do for you today Naruto? Have you been having trouble with the villagers? No, but I think I know why I have trouble with them now Hokage Gigi. Caught off guard by this and hoping his suspicions were wrong, Hiruzen replied oh, do tell? Well I had a dream last night but it wasn't like a normal dream. It felt like I was trapped inside my own mind. After wandering around for a while I came across a large pit in a field, contained in the pit was a big fox. He had nine tails, and there was a tag with seal on the bars over top of the pit. I tried talking to the fox but he simply glanced at me with one eye then went back to sleep. Explained the boy. I see, the Hokage said, it must be his mindscape, and his first meeting with the QB. He is smart enough to figure this out on his own so I should come clean about everything before he comes to any conclusions and decides he can't trust me, the son Daime reasoned. What you experienced was not a dream, I believe it was your mindscape. And the fox you encountered would be the Kyubi no Kitsune. How much do you know about the events that happened six years ago Naruto? Well, I know the Kyubi attached the village six years ago, and the Yondame sacrificed himself to defeat the beast. I know many many people died that night. He replied, you would be correct in saying that the Yondame defeated the beast, but he did not kill it. The Kyubi is a Baijuu, and a Baijuu cannot be killed. If they are killed they will disperse and reform in a few years to sow destruction in their feral state. The only way to safely suppress a Baijuu is to seal it inside a newborn, whose chakra coils have not yet developed. On the night the Yondaime fought the Kyubi, he and his wife, Kushina Uzumaki, sacrificed themselves to seal the beast inside their newborn son, Yu, Naruto Uzumaki. Hiruzen explained solemnly hoping the boy wouldn't take this too hard. Okay, so you mean to tell me that I have the QB sealed inside of me, and that I am the illegitimate son of the Yondaime and the Red Death of Kanaha? That is a lot to take in. Why wasn't I told earlier? Naruto questioned. A select few shinobi councilmen and myself decided that it would not be safe to tell you of your lineage, due to the Yondaime's enemies he made during the Third Great War. As such we were going to wait until you either turned 16, or became a Chunin to tell you of your lineage and inheritance. The Hokage explained, since you know everything now, I must ask that you do not spread this information lightly. It could put you in great danger if word spread outside the village walls. If you could find it within you to forgive me for deceiving you these past six years, I would like to offer you the keys to the Namikaze estate, and everything that your parents left for you. But Hokage Gigi, if I were to move into the estate wouldn't it create issues within the village? It would be safer if I continued on as is. I will take my rightful inheritance when I can better protect myself. I will take any scrolls they left me however, as I can maybe learn something from them. The boy replied, did I just hear what I think I heard come out of a six year old? His reasoning and deduction skills are incredible. As you wish Naruto, I will retrieve the scrolls and bring them to you at your cave. Speaking of which, do you still insist on living in that cave? It is harder to keep an eye on you and react appropriately if something happens when you are outside the walls, Hiruzen said. You always have an Anbu watching me anyways and the villagers don't see me as much when I keep to myself outside the walls anyway so it causes less problems for everyone. Plus, I like the peace and quiet of my cave, and my eyes don't play tricks of people I don't want them to out there. He explained, as you wish Naruto, I will see you tonight with your scrolls. Do you think you could prepare a stew for us? 
I always have liked your cooking. Hiruzen requested. I, I wouldn't mind the company, see you tonight Hokage Gigi, the boy replied and swiftly left the office, heading for the secret tunnel under the wall to his cave. I always forget how powerful his eyes are, I wonder if he will be able to enroll in the academy or not. Hiruzen mused while he searched his safe for the scrolls. Flashback end. It had been two years since Naruto had learned of his tenant and his lineage. Since then he has spent most of his time studying the many scrolls his parents had left him. He still hasn't found any scrolls explaining his eyes however. His eyes are a bright yellow, with four tomoe around the pupil, which was a slit instead of a circle. He can't turn them off, like the similar in appearance Sharingan. His dark red hair accompanying his eerie eyes were off-putting for most people he met. And if that didn't do it, his status as the Kyuubi Jin Churiki did. With his eyes he is able to cast powerful Genjutsu without hand signs, simply by imagining the scenario and making eye contact with his target. This is the main reason he chooses to live in a cave outside the village, because he lost control one time and the victim committed suicide from the fear induced by the Genjutsu. It was a Janan that was chasing him through the village on his birthday, throwing rocks at him. Naruto didn't mean to cast an illusion on him, but he was so emotionally distraught he couldn't help it. The Hokage found him in a cave a couple days later, and ever since Naruto has refused to live in the village until he can control his eyes. So for the past two years, Naruto has been studying his inheritance from his parents, learning what he can and waiting until he hears from the Sun Daime if he can attend the academy like a normal kid. Deeply immersed in his scrolls, he didn't hear the footsteps echoing from the entrance of his cave. Hello Naruto, reading anything interesting? Hiruzen asked with an amused expression on his face. Naruto jumped in the air with a screech. What the hell Hokage Gigi, don't sneak up on me like that, he yelled in shock. What do you mean sneak up on you? I knocked on the cave wall and announced my arrival. Hiruzen replied, clearly enjoying the fact that he could still sometimes surprise his favorite pseudo-grandson. Oh, well I was rather into this scroll. It explains how to do fuinjutsu without ink and paper. You just do some hand signs and write the seal in the air with your fingers. Then you apply your head to the intended target area. Cool huh? I can already do the exploding seal. Wanna see? He exclaimed excitedly. Whoa whoa whoa, let's not blow ourselves up in your cave alright? Show me outside. Hiruzen replied with a nice smile. This is quite the technique if it works like I think it works. Nobody but Kushina and Jiraiya knew how to do it. I'm sure this boy will be a few Fuinjutsu master when he is older. Hiruzen mused as he walked beside the young boy. Okay, check this out. Naruto yelled as he did three quick hand signs then wiggled his fingers on his left hand around, before jabbing a tree trunk. When he jumped away you could see the inner circle of the seal count down from three before it exploded, demolishing the tree. Whoa, that was larger than I meant for it to be, whoops, Naruto said sheepishly. That is a very impressive technique Naruto. I don't think I know anyone aside from your Kaosan and Jiraiya that can do Fuinjutsu like that. You're a natural. Now don't you want to know why I came to visit you today? Hiruzen asked. Oh yeah, let's go back inside and we can chat. The boy exclaimed before leading the Hokage back inside by his sleeve. Alright Hokage Gigi, what did you want to talk about? Naruto asked. Well, remember when you asked me about whether or not you could enroll in the academy? The council has came to a decision, and because you do not have control over your eyes, they have voted that you should not enroll in the academy. Before you get upset. I have decided on a secondary course of action that will ensure you can get the training you require. I have assigned our Genjutsu specialist to train you herself until such time as you gain control over your eyes, and then we will look at either enrolling you in the academy, or having you challenge the graduation exams and becoming a Janan that way. How does that sound? Hiruzen explained. Wait, you really mean it? You found someone willing to train me? Do they want to train me? I don't want to be a burden to anyone. If she has more important duties to attend to. I can continue as I have been. I don't mind. Naruto replied with a slightly dejected and lonely look in his eyes. Why don't you ask her yourself if she wants to train you? Kuranai, come in here would you? Hiruzen said. After that, Kuranai Yuhi walked into the cave and sat down across the fire slash cooking pot on a wooden tree bench. Yes Hokage-sama, is this the young boy you were telling me about? She asked. Yes this is Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto, this is Kuranai. When I told her about your eyes she expressed great interest in wanting to work with you. She is arguably the best Genjutsu specialist we have in Konoha, Hiruzen stated. Wow, your eyes are really pretty miss, do you really want to train me? Naruto asked, more than a little bit of hope in his tone. After hearing about you Naruto, of course I want to teach you. Hell, if my hunch is correct by the end of the next four years you'll be teaching me. She replied with a wink. Naruto was stunned. 
He looked silently from the Hokage back to Kurinai with his mouth hanging open, wondering if this was a dream. Coming to his senses he made a hand sign and shouted release. When he blinked and looked back up at his current guests, he tilted his head to the side and looked awestruck at them again. Kurinai leaned over to the Hokage and asked is this normal? Should we do something? He'll come to shortly. He hasn't encountered anyone who wanted to spend time with him that he can remember, so this seems surreal to him. Most people are scared of his eyes, and those who aren't hate him for his situation, the Hokage whispered back. I understand, this might be a long four years, she replied. Hokage Gigi, I want to join Anbu. I want to go on missions and get stronger. How can I do that if I don't have a team and I don't get to go on missions and I don't get to test my abilities against other villages since we aren't at war, Naruto exclaimed, frustrated with the lack of progress he had made over the past two hours going back and forth with Hiruzen and Kurinai. I understand you don't want me to join Anbu because of their intense practices, and I know of the dangers of Root, but I can handle myself when it comes to internal village affairs regarding who controls me. Nordo spit out with venom. Upon hearing this Hiruzen immediately motioned for his Anbu to leave the office. Get me dog and then vacate the office please, he stated, a very serious look on his face. Naruto-kun, we will wait until dog gets here, and then we can continue this discussion, Hiruzen turned back to Naruto as he spoke. Seconds later, an Anbu with a dog mask appeared, kneeled beside the Sondaime's desk. You called, Hokage-sama. Dog spoke. Yes, allow me to activate the privacy seals, and you will understand why I have called you, Hiruzen replied as he made a couple hand signs activating his seals around the room. Now, the reason I called you, is because Uzumaki-san here wishes to join Anbu, despite knowing the risks associated with the multiple organizations of influence within the village. He knows about Root? Dog asked, more to himself than to the room. That he does, how I do not know, but I should know by now not to underestimate his deduction skills. I believe Naruto-kun here would benefit greatly from joining Anbu, however I am reluctant to allow him to join without having certain precautions in place. I believe it would be best to wait until Kurinai-san believes that he is at a tuning level before we allow him to join Anbu. I also think that if he is to join Anbu, he should be directly underneath your tutelage. What are your thoughts on this? Hiruzen asked as he turned from Dog to Kurinai. Well Hokage-sama, I think you and I both know by now that once Naruto-kun here has set his mind to anything, he will not rest until he accomplishes it. As such, I find your terms for his admittance agreeable. I don't wish to lose my favorite little nightmare. But I can't think of anyone better to oversee his well-being than Dog San here, Kurin I explained with some reluctance in her voice. If this is what you wish, I will accept my mission Hokage-sama, Dog replied. There is no way he will be able to reach Chunin level anytime soon, is there? I've heard the rumors of his advanced learning curve, but still. He only just passed the Janan graduation exams. Dog thought to himself. Additionally. I would like you to drop out of Anbu and return to join a Jinan team once your age group graduates from the academy, is that acceptable to you Naruto-kun? Hiruzen asked. Hi, thank you Hokage Gigi, I will be at Chunin level in no time, just you wait, Naruto stated with a confident smirk on his face. He was bubbling with excitement. Finally, I can continue getting stronger. No offense to Kurunai-sensei, but she has been rather limited in what Gigi has allowed her to teach me the last year. She was right about me ending up teaching her about Genjutsu as well. I need to find someone who can teach me about Fuinjutsu soon. Maybe after I'm out of Anbu. Alright Naruto-kun, you are dismissed. Dog, Kurinai, please stay a moment please, Hiruzen said with a wave of his hand at Naruto. The little nightmare as Kurinai calls him was much too excited to ponder the last statement and practically floated out of the room, stuck in his musings. What is the matter Hokage-sama? Kurinai questioned. Kakashi. I don't want you to reveal who you are to Naruto. I want him to know you only as dog. If he truly wishes to join Anbu then I want to see if he can maintain the distanced relationship between partners. I am going to send word to Jiraiya, I believe he will be very interested in his godson's current abilities. Hopefully in a few years he will return to the village to train him and get his QB chakra control at a safer level. That way we can hopefully avoid any further incidents like you had to deal with Kurinai. I will leave you to fill Kakashi in on the details of the occurrence. Hiruzen replied, flashback end. We currently find Naruto sitting in the back of his age group's academy classroom in his standard Anbu gear, minus his pitch black mask, waiting silently for team assignments. Hiruzen had approached Naruto about leaving Anbu and joining his age group for Janan teams. He successfully convinced Naruto that making more friends his current age would greatly benefit both him and the village as a whole. Sitting beside his only friend in the room, 
The Hugo heiress, Naruto patiently awaited the instructor's entrance while ignoring the looks of inquisition he was receiving from the rest of the classroom. A boy with red marks on his cheeks and a puppy sitting on his head finally got fed up with the mysterious stranger sitting beside his crush and decided to approach. Hey new guy, who are you? I ain't seen you around here before. And how do you know Hinata? She doesn't seem like the kind of person to hang around goons like you, he jabbed. Naruto opened one of his eyes not missing the look of surprise on the Inuzuka's face, and settled his stare on the boy. After successfully making the boy uncomfortable with his silent one-eyed stare, Naruto calmly replied I am one of the people to be teamed with this age group. As for who Hinata spends her time with, don't you think it is up to her to decide, and not you, Kiba? That eye, is it a Sharngan? No, it's not red, it's yellow. But what is it? I've never heard of a dojutsu that is like that? Kiba thought all while stunned by the gaze of a yellow eye with four Tomoe circling a black slit for a pupil. The predatory gaze was severely unnerving for him. His animalistic instinct screaming at him to turn and run with his tail tucked between his legs. Akumaru whined when Kiba spoke, How do you know my name? I didn't introduce myself to you. I know you didn't, but I was briefed on everyone who I would possibly be teamed with. It is only logical to know who you will be teamed up with beforehand. Briefed? What are you, Exonbu? No one talks like that. Kiba scoffed. Kakiba kun, P please don't antagonize Naruto kun anymore. He is an old friend I am met through Kurunai sensei. Hinata finally chimed in. Since you inquired, I am Exonbu, now if you would so kindly return to your seat, I was enjoying the peacefulness beside Hina chan before you made yourself known. Naruto states before closing his eyes again, waving Kiba off. Kiba grunts and turns around, returning to his seat. What is that guy's deal, and there is no way he is Exonbu? He looks like he is the same age as us, Kiba ponders. He would have continued his inquiries, but the boy's eyes unsettled him greatly. Naruto-kun, you didn't have to activate your eyes on Kiba-kun. He is harmless, really, Hinata whispered to Naruto. I know, but I didn't cast anything on him, just open them to unnerve him a bit. He wouldn't have left me alone otherwise, Naruto replies without looking over. I don't know why it unnerves people, I I think they are mesmerizing. Hinata muses more to herself than to Naruto. How do you know I'm not using them to influence you like that, Hinata-chan? Naruto whispers, adding the honorific to increase her blush. Hinata lightly hits him on the shoulder, stammering the whole time. Why you ww wouldn't d dare Naruto-kun? She stammers out, poking her index fingers together and blushing. Naruto just winks in response, returning to his silent musings while waiting for the teacher to show up. After another 15 minutes, Iruka enters the room with a folder in his hands. Hello everyone, and congratulations on graduating from the academy. I have your team assignments here, so please listen up. As Naruto tunes him out, listening for his name. Team 7 is Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno, and Naruto Uzumaki. Jonin Sensei is Kakashi Hatake. Iruka states, getting a grunt from Naruto. I was hoping to be on your team Hinata, too bad. Naruto whispers to her getting a blush and a nod in response. Teammate is Kiba Inuzuka, Shino Aburame, and Hinata Hyuga with Kuranai Yuhi as the Jonin Sensei. Interesting, I didn't know Kuranai Sensei was going to be taking a team this year. Makes sense I guess. Maybe she got sick of me, Naruto whispers with a smirk, receiving silent admonishment from Hinata. She would never get sick of you Naruto-kun, maybe she just couldn't get her request approved for you to be on her team, Hinata replies. Team 9 is still in rotation from last year. So Team 10 is Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, and Choji Akimichi. Sensei is Asuma Sarutobe. Now that all the teams are assigned, please wait patiently for your team leaders for further instruction, Iruka said as he left the room. Immediately after Asuma and Kurunai entered, Team 10 meet me at Hakimichi Barbecue in 15. Asuma barked as he shunshined away. His students left, with a muttering of troublesome. Team 8 meet me at training grounds 8 in 20 minutes, Kurunai said. But before she could leave she caught sight of a mop of red hair. Did you get tired of me Kurunai sensei? I thought you would have told me if you were taking a Jinan team this year. Naruto spoke, with a smirk on his face. Naruto-kun, I wanted to surprise you by being your sensei again. But Hokage-sama argued that you had already taught me enough, and that I should share you, she replied with affection clear in her voice. Naruto smiled in return. Well I guess that makes sense, dinner tonight, for old time's sake? It's been a couple months since I got to cook for you too, Naruto questioned while glancing at Hinata. Hinata blushed and nodded, while Kuranai winked at him and shouted Team 8, let's go you're gonna be late, 
as she also sunshined away. Sasuke glanced at Naruto with a confused look on his face, questioning him about the odd interaction only to find Naruto with his eyes closed again after teammate left. HN he grunted before returning to ignoring the fawning of Sakura. A couple hours pass before Naruto starts to get irritated with his new sensei. About to make his irritation known, the door slid open to reveal a tall man with gravity-defying silver hair, a face mask covering his lower face and his headband covering one eye. His nose was buried in a little orange book, seemingly ignoring the three kids in the room. After a grunt, he looked up. He seems moody, must still be brooding. I see I also have the civilian pink-haired Kunoichi and Naruto, I wonder how long it will take for him to figure it out, Kakashi mused from over the top of his book. Hey I smiled at the three before opening his mouth. Training ground 7 in 5 minutes, don't be late or I'll send you back here, he spoke, before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. Naruto stood and also disappeared in a swirl of leaves, leaving a startled Sakura and Sasuke. Well, guess we better hustle, Sakura said before darting out the door with Sasuke on her heels. So, you changed your mind on teaching kids a dog san? Naruto spoke from beside Kakashi. I didn't expect you to make the connection so quick Naruto, as deft as always I see. Naruto deadpanned, your mask doesn't hide your hair, no one else in the village has hair like that. He replied, slightly offended that Kakashi had such low expectations of his deduction skills. Mm, I guess so, maybe I should have dyed my hair before taking this job, Kakashi mumbled to himself, earning another face fault from Naruto. So. You gonna put us through the teamwork test with the bells? You might fool Sakura but I can't imagine the Uchiha not catching on to such a simple test, Naruto changed the subject. While I was going to use the test, I even borrowed Hokage-sama's special bells, but since you already figured it out, I guess the point would be moot. He shrugged. Soon after Sakura and Sasuke arrived, both out of breath. How'd you get here so fast hum? What is your name again? Sakura asked between breathes. Naruto Uzumaki and I shunshined here. Why didn't you guys? He replied, slightly confused as to why they took so long. What do you mean why didn't we? We don't know how. That isn't a Janon level technique. She almost screeched. Damn, I see why she is called a banshee. I might have to pick up some earplugs if I want to get any peace and quiet between her fawning over the Uchiha and her screeching in response to anything else well, I guess the academy is slipping since the war, eh Kakashi? Naruto joked earning an eye smile out of Kakashi. Yes I suppose so, but then again, it takes a lot of chakra control to perform, and since the academy doesn't teach much chakra control, they can't safely learn the technique. Maybe I'll teach them eventually. Now that everyone is here, let's do some introductions before this test, Kakashi addressed his three Janan. Naruto groaned, having already expected this from his former comrade. Naruto Uzumaki, I like learning about my lineage and spending time with people close to me. I dislike ignorance, I'll keep my dreams to myself. I am a Genjutsu and Fuinjutsu specialist, Naruto rattled off the answers to the usual topics of these introductions, before looking towards Sakura. I'm okay, I am Sakura Haruno, I like Sasuke-kun, I dislike fangirls of Sasuke-kun, my dream is to prove to Sasuke-kun that I am his best choice for a girlfriend. I don't really have any specialties. Sakura spoke, all the while looking at Sasuke which earned her an annoyed grunt from the moody Uchiha. Sasuke Uchiha, I don't have any likes that concern you, I dislike being compared to my traitorous brother, I strive to grow strong enough to redeem my clan and take revenge on a certain someone. I would probably be better at ninjutsu and taijutsu than anything else. I'm a close to midrange fighter, Sasuke stated, earning an intrigued look from Kakashi. Alright well now that that is out of the way, let's move on to the tests. Since Naruto here figured out the original test already, I'll improvise a bit and evaluate your individual skills. Sakura you're first, Kakashi explained, walking out into the clearing, waiting on Sakura to attack him. Wait, what about your introductions? She screeched, getting a wince from Naruto with the sheer volume of her cry. Oh right, I'm Kakashi Hitake, that is all you need to know. Now come at me with the intent to kill, or I will ship you back to the academy, he replied, not putting down his book or even looking at her. Frustrated, Sakura charged at him throwing two kunai before getting in taijutsu range. Kakashi simply stepped to the side, before dodging her barrage of punches and kicks, silently making note of her sloppy form and many openings in her technique. This continued for ten minutes before Sakura had tired herself out too much to continue, and plopped down on the ground, having not landed a hit. Done already? Guess you've got quite a bit of work ahead of you if you want to stay on this team, Kakashi said emotionlessly before pointing back to the other two Janan. Sakura more than slightly dejected at the blatant insult of her skill, 
walked over to the sitting area and laid down, too exhausted to argue right now. Sasuke, up next. Kakashi ordered, still not taking his eyes off his book. Sasuke leapt over to a bush for cover, planning out his course of action. He fended off Sakura without looking away from his book. I'm going to have to bring out everything I have if I want to even scratch him. Sasuke reasoned, before throwing a barrage of shuriken, watching as they hit their mark, only for Kakashi to be replaced with a log. Damn, substitution. Now he knows where I am, have to find him and act quickly. Sasuke dashed to the next area of cover, and spotted a certain Jonin lazily lounging in a tree reading a book. Smirking, Sasuke crept up to him as quietly as possible, before launching into a physical assault of punches and kicks. Finding no success in his physical assault, Sasuke jumped back before weaving a couple hand signs fire style, great fireball jutsu, he shouted, spewing a giant fireball out of his mouth at Kakashi. Thinking he had landed a hit, Sasuke cockily walked forward, only to find a scorched log on the ground. Frowning, Sasuke went stiff when he felt a kunai point in his lower back. Not bad, but we've got some things to work on. Now let's get back to the others, Kakashi spoke before disappearing from the forest. When Sasuke returned to the group and dropped down, tired from his test, Kakashi spoke all right, I think I have a gauge on your abilities. We will meet back here tomorrow at 8 am for training and possibly a mission if things go well. Dismissed. Before he could shunshine away Sakura spoke of. Wait what about Naruto, you didn't test him. How do we know he isn't useless? I don't need to test Naruto, he was my partner in Anbu, and I don't feel like having nightmares for a week simply for a spar or losing function of my limbs for that matter. Kakashi replied before disappearing, leaving Tujinan with mouths on the ground, and an apparently napping red-haired boy. W was he serious Naruto? You were in the Anbu? And what did he mean by nightmares? Why would he have nightmares from sparring you? Sakura asked, dumbfounded by the Anbu revelation. Sasuke was quietly hoping for an answer to Sakura's questions as well. He needed to size up his competition. Yes, I am ex-Anbu. I spent almost three years with Kakashi Sensei as my senior officer. As for the nightmares, let's just say I have a very special and potent form of Genjutsu I utilize as part of my fighting style. I earned the moniker Red Nightmare for a reason. Naruto replied, as he opened his eyes, flaring his dojutsu and activating a weak Genjutsu. Sakura and Sasuke went wide-eyed at the eyes, before gasping in fear as a giant fox appeared behind him. It was staring right at them, almost as if it was peering through their souls saliva dripping from its feral grin. As soon as it appeared it was gone, just as Naruto's eyes changed to normal blue eyes. W what was that? Was that a Ganjutsu? But you didn't use any hand signs or say anything. Was that a Sharingan? But it was yellow, Sasuke continued to rattle off questions, still trying to wrap his mind around what happened. Sakura still paralyzed in fear, had her mouth open and her hands clutching at her chest. That is my Dojutsu, and it's classified, so no I will not tell you about it. Naruto replied. Now, I have dinner with Kurunai Sensei and Hina Chan so I will be going. See you all tomorrow, he said as he shunshined to his cave to prepare for the meal in a couple hours. This is going to be a long few months. Team 7 had been doing D-rank missions for a month now, and it was clearly evident to Kakashi that his team was growing irritated with the course. I know Naruto has figured out that these D-rank missions are simply a way to test the team's patience and we won't get any good missions until someone expresses their disdain to Hokage-sama. I wonder why he hasn't said anything yet, is he testing Sasuke and Sakura's patience? Always crafty that one. Kakashi mused while waiting for his team's 86th D rank assignment. A tuning hummed and hot as he sifted through the missions available. Ah here we go, this one should prove challenging, he stated, with a bit of venom in his voice looking at Naruto as he passed the scroll to Kakashi. A smug smirk crossed the Chunin's face as he watched Kakashi open the scroll. Well my cute little Jinan, it looks like we're on tour duty again, he said, eye smiling while his team let out a collective shudder at the memories of their last encounter with the appropriately dubbed bane of the Jinan Hellspun. You know the drill, get the cat back to the daimyo's wife by 1500 hours today, no later. I'll be observing from the shadows. Sakura, your team lead this time, Kakashi stated before he shunshined away. The team let out a groan at the thought of dealing with this cat for a seventh time in the past month. This is the last straw they all thought simultaneously. Giving their respective teammates a glance, everyone nodded and walked out the door. All right Hokage-sama, I've had enough of these D-rank missions. I cannot handle another Hellspawn retrieval mission. It almost ripped off my ear this time. Sakura screeched. The team had successfully returned the demon cat to its owner, albeit not unscathed. 
Sakura, being assigned the team leader was left helpless upon cornering the feline monstrosity. As such she suffered numerous scratches and a maimed ear. Nothing a quick trip to the hospital couldn't fix, but she had too much pride to go to the hospital for treatment of her injuries suffered from the cat. The ridicule one received for getting wounds from Toro medically treated was severe. Toro was somewhat of an unspoken Jinan initiation mission, one that every Jinan suffered through at least once. I'm impressed it took your team this long to snap Kakashi, but so be it. I think this C-rank mission will do nicely. An escort to the Land of Waves, and bodyguard duty during the bridge construction. Sound good? Hiruzen asked, received nods from the team. Hiruzen handed Kakashi the scroll and bid them farewell. Alright team. Meet at the gates at 0800. Pack for two weeks of travel. We can resupply in the village once we arrive. We will be gone for at least a couple months, but depending on the construction progress during the winter storms, it could be up to six months. Everyone clear on the details? Kakashi asked. I, see you tomorrow at 0800 Kakashi Sensei, Naruto said before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. Both Sasuke and Sakura nodded to their sensei before walking away to prepare for the mission. Naruto appeared at training ground 8, and found a stump to lay back on, before promptly falling into a light sleep while he waited for teammate to finish training. Kurinai glanced over at him and smiled, does he have something to tell me, or is here for Hinata again? Probably the later. I guess I can end training a bit early, Hinata has been working hard lately, she thought before whistling, getting her team's attention. What's up sensei, something else for us to work on. Kiba questioned. He was sweating from his three-way sparring with Shino and Hinata, but had been thoroughly enjoying the workout. I think we are going to call it a day, good work everyone and I'll meet you all at the Hokage's office tomorrow morning at 0900 for another mission. Kurinai replied, glancing at Hinata and then over to the sleeping form of a certain redhead a ways off to the side of the field. Hinata blushed and nodded, which wasn't missed by Kiba. I know I have no chance by no Hinata, but is that guy really who you want spend your time with? He could hurt you. He's dangerous. Kiba reasoned. He wasn't ready for the intimidating glare she rounded on him. Akomaru let out a yelp and hid in Kiba's jacket as she continued her glare. Naruto-kun is nothing but a gentleman with me. I trust him entirely, and we have known each other for years. He makes me happy and I will continue to spend my time with him. Is that a problem Kiba-kun? Hinata dragged his name out while smiling all too sweetly, causing the boy to sweat. Shit. Guess I should know by now to tread carefully when it concerns the Uzumaki boy. I apologize Hinata, I guess I don't know him like you do, Kiba replied before walking off, probably back to his compound. When did she get so scary? I see you're putting a womanly spin on the intimidation techniques Naruto has been teaching you Hinata, Kurinai commented with a smile. Kurinai got up and walked over to the sleeping Naruto. She winked at Hinata before leaning down next to his ear and lightly blowing on it. Naruto jolted upright. A kunai prepped in his right hand and an incapacitation few in jutsu prepped in his left. Well, I didn't know you were into things like that Naruto. I'm sure if you just ask Hinata she would comply, Kurinai replied with a wink. Hinata stammered profusely, her face turning the color of his hair. Naruto responded with an appropriate amount of stammering himself. Somehow Kurinai always managed to catch him off guard with these underhanded tactics. Now, who were you looking for? Myself or Hinata? She questioned. As she caught his glance over to Hinata she took her K, smiled and disappeared in a swirl of leaves. H. Hey Naruto-kun, did you have something you w wanted to talk about? Hinata asked, failing to completely quell her stuttering due to Kurinai's antics. Hinata had made significant progress in her confidence since she started spending time with Kurinai and Naruto. Something about being around Naruto, and the silent support she received from Kurinai, helped her confidence greatly. After being practically disowned by her father, who now spent all his time on her younger sister Hanabi, Hinata had been very secluded and reserved. Kurinai took it upon herself to take her under her wing. She felt a sense of responsibility for the girl, having been the student of her late mother. Kurinai would swing by the academy and drag Hinata along to Naruto's place to take part in their training, or simply to hang out. She felt safe in the presence of the self-exiled redhead. His aura was warm and inviting, a foreign feeling in the Hyuga compound. Oh, ah uh, yeah. My team got assigned a C-rank mission and we leave tomorrow. We could be gone for a few months, so I uh, I wanted to cook for you tonight before I leave. If it's okay with you? He asked, crossing his fingers behind his back. Why am I nervous asking her this? It isn't like I haven't cooked for her before. We've done this hundreds of times. Naruto was forced out of his thoughts when he heard a soft voice. Oh, of course I will join you tonight Naruto-kun. Let's head into the village to get some ingredients before we head outside the wall. 
And since you're leaving, I am going to cook for you tonight. No buts, she insisted with a smile as she almost skipped towards the village. A soft smile graced his face as he stuffed his hands in his pockets and turned to follow after her. As they walked through the village, Naruto listened to Hinata cheerfully talk about her last few missions with a content smile on his face. She would stop at a stall here and there, picking up fresh produce or spices here and there while she continued her one-sided conversation. The pair received many confused, surprised and dirty looks from the villagers. Many refused to sell to the QB, but they couldn't really refuse service to the most powerful clan in the village. Many had never seen the Hyuga air so bubbly, and could only stare dumbfounded at the duo casually strolling through the village as Hinata was rambling on while handing Naruto random things from the stalls for him to carry. Even more surprising was the smile on the Uzumaki's face. Many villagers didn't believe he could do anything but scowl or smirk, and most believed he didn't deserve to have anything but a sad expression on his face. Slowly the pair made their way out of the village and towards Naruto's dwelling. Hinata walked right through the large stone that was an illusion to hide the entrance to the cave with Naruto and Doh. She quickly set to preparing the meal, as Naruto lighted the fire and went to fetch some water for the pot, whistling quietly as he did so. When he returned he tried to help with the meal prep, but his hand was promptly smacked away by the lavender-eyed girl. No, you sit down and wait patiently. I said I would cook and I intend to. You have a mission tomorrow and you need your rest, she stated with a hand on her hip her other waving a finger in his face. But it isn't fair to let you do the cooking in my own cave, he retorted. I don't care, just let me do something for you Naruto-kun. It's so rare that I can do anything for you, so please let me do this okay? She asked, her eyes almost pleading for him to give in. Hinata, you know that isn't true. I still haven't repaid you for what you did for me. You. You should never have to do anything for me again. He spoke quietly, looking down at the ground with a hurt expression on his face. She looked at him with a mixture of sadness and something he couldn't make out, before quickly stepping forward and hugging him. As she did so he fell to his knees, and she pushed his head into her stomach to comfort him. I would do it again in a heartbeat. I will bring you back every time I have to Naruto-kun. You know that, she whispered softly, running her hand through his red locks as she thought back to that unfortunate night. Flashback. Hinata had just gotten out of the academy for the day and decided she would surprise Naruto and Kurenai. She utilized all of her training so far from her three years in the academy and dropped her clan tail before sneaking out of E-Village to her favorite little clearing. When she arrived she found Kuranai and Naruto sparring, with a dog-masked Anbo sitting off to the side of the clearing. Lately they had been testing Naruto's ability with his QB chakra, under order of the Hokage to find out how much control he had of it. Naruto had been able to utilize a bit of it, but not manifest a cloak yet. She currently gazed at a Naruto on all fours with his eyes red instead of blue and slitted like his dojutsu. His hair was slightly longer and wilder, almost appearing like a beast's mane. His nails were elongated and sharpened. As the Anbu watched, Kurunai prompted Naruto to bring out more chakra, in order to try and create a chakra cloak. Hinata looked on, as nothing seemed to be happening. Suddenly the Anbu jumped into a ready stance, and then she felt it. An ominous presence descended upon the clearing, malicious and suffocating. A dark red cloud started to surround Naruto, and his eyes seemed to glow red. He snarled viciously at Gurunai, and they could tell his control was slipping. As Dog looked at Gurunai, she shook her head, telling the Anbu that she had the situation under control. Nobody in the clearing was ready for what happened next. Naruto's eyes changed from the feral red of the QB to his Dojutsu. The Domoe spun launching a severe Genjutsu at Gurunai, and affecting his surroundings as well. Gurunai screamed out in horror and pain, as did the Anbu. Hinata was stricken still with fear at what she saw. The illusion had manifested a swarm of crows. The swarm was assaulting both Kurunai and the Anbu, tearing chunks of flesh from their bodies before rising up and diving again. Hinata could hear the screams of the two victims, and she steeled her resolve. Making a quick hand sign she flared her chakra and shouted release. Just as soon as the crows had appeared they disappeared. Naruto's genjutsu illusions were incredibly hard to break. They not only required the victims to notice that they were under a genjutsu, but in order to break them you had to expend chakra to do so. It was agreed upon by the Hokage and Kurunai that this was a side effect of Naruto's mysterious dojutsu. Hinata thanked Kami above that Naruto wasn't focused on the illusion, making it less costly for her to dispel. Her relief soon disappeared as the next layer of the illusion manifested itself. All three found themselves tied up to a stake. Kurunai and the Anbu were still in shock from the vicious assault of the crows from the first illusion, and seemed unresponsive. Hinata flared her chakra again and shouted release. The stake disappeared, 
but upon taking in her surroundings while preparing for a third illusion, Hinata found that the Anbu and Kur and I were still tied to the posts. It was then that Hinata noticed the new form Hinata had taken. He had tail of pure chakra spread out behind him, and the chakra cloak was taking on a darker red tinge, almost the color of blood. He snarled and pulled out a kunai. Sinking low on his hind legs, he sprung forward, aiming to plunge the kunai into Kurunai's chest. As the sound of metal cutting into flesh was heard, two screams and a gasp filled the air. The dog Anbu gasped at the sight, Kurunai screamed in horror, and Hinata cried out in pain. As Naruto looked down in front of him his cloak started to fade, and his feral appearance started to recede, being replaced by a look mortified expression. Naruto looked at his left hand. It was wrapped around the handle of a kunai, whose blade was dug deep into Hinata's right shoulder, under her collarbone. With a gasp he slowly stepped back, the genjutsu dispelling, dropping the two remaining victims to the ground. No, no 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 no. No. Naruto screamed. He dropped to his knees in front of his only friend. Why? Why did you do that? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry Hinata. I I couldn't, I didn't, I, I. He started sobbing openly in front of Hinata mumbling gibberish in his attempt to express his horrified thoughts. I stabbed Hinata. I couldn't control myself. I hurt her. I promised I wouldn't, but I did. Naruto was pulled from his self-admonishment when he felt a soft fabric press against his face, and a hand wrap around his neck, pulling him into the embrace. This aura, it's so warm, and soft. It feels like Hinata, but why? She should hate me. What's going on? As Naruto risked a glance upwards, he felt a hand run through his hair, that feels nice. His eyes locked onto Hinata's gaze and he froze. His bottom lip quivered more as we waited for her verbal lashing, but all he found was tenderness and forgiveness in her gaze. W.Y. He forced out in a choked sob. It's okay Naruto-kun, you're back now. Everything is alright. Hinata kooed as she continued to hold his head against her stomach and run her hand through his hair. No. I hurt you. Why don't you hate me? I'm a monster. Naruto pulled himself from her embrace and slouched further. Fresh tears fell from his eyes as he clenched his fists, pulling up some grass. Hinata grasped the kunai in her shoulder and grunted as she pulled out and tossed it to the side. Kneeling in front of Naruto, she cupped his face with her hands, forcing him to hold her stare. I'm fine, Naruto-kun. You didn't hurt me. That wasn't you. You're back now and it's okay. I forgive you. It wasn't your fault, but I forgive you anyways, she spoke with the softness a mother would speak to her child with. Slowly she wrapped her arms around him again, and was relieved when he clutched onto her back and buried his head in her neck, sobbing some more. Kurunai slowly got up of the ground as Hinata calmed down Naruto and walked over to the Anbu. She gave a look to the ninja who simply nodded and disappeared, going to the hospital to find a medic. He returned a minute later to find Naruto still clutching onto Hinata. The medic released a gasp upon seeing her charge, but was silenced by a look from Kurunai. Understanding the look she received from the red-eyed woman. The medic approaching Hinata slowly and silently. Placing a comforting hand on her back, she focused her chakra, mending Hinata's wound. When she finished healing it as best as she could from behind, Hinata waved her off, her life not threatened and the bleeding stopped. Nodding, the medic returned to Kurunai and the Anbu. If I can't get a better angle at the wound it will scar. She isn't bleeding anymore though. Kurunai nodded and waved the medic off, who disappeared in a swirl of leaves. She gave one look at the Anbu who nodded and disappeared as well, on his way to the Hokaye's office. Kurunai sighed and backed up against a tree, sliding down it to rest. It would be a long night tonight. It took another hour before Naruto had cried himself to sleep in the comfort of Hinata's arms. Hinata herself had fallen asleep, the stress of the situation draining her. Kurunai smiled at the couple before picking them up and taking them into Naruto's cave and putting them down on the bed to rest a while longer. I should probably inform Hyuga-sama that I will be training his daughter tonight for nighttime reconnaissance to ease his suspicions, she reasoned to herself before setting out for the Hyuga compound, nodding at the Hokage and the dog mask Hanbu as they arrived to relieve her of her watch. Flashback end. As Hinata ran her hands through his hair, Naruto looked up at her with a questioning look. How can you forgive me so easily? I hurt you so badly. It left a scar, I can't be forgiven for almost killing you. In control or not, it is unforgivable. Hinata pulled back and did something she didn't think she would ever do before. She slapped him. Hard. Naruto slowly brought his hand up to touch his red cheek, a shocked look across his face. Hinata kneeled down in front of Naruto and pulled her shirt to the side to reveal a scar below her right collarbone. I will decide what is or isn't forgivable. You can't get rid of me as easily as something like this, Naruto-kun. I bear this scar with pride. 
I was able to help you, and this is a small price to pay for your sanity. I said it before and I will say it again. I would do it again in a heartbeat. I will bring you back each and every time I need to. I will not lose you to the burden you carry for this village, she stated with conviction. The fierceness of her gaze kept Naruto locked on her lavender orbs. Emboldened by her recent outburst, she cupped his cheek opposite the bright red mark, leaned forward and placed a gentle kiss on the mark. Now sit down by the fire, shut up and let me cook for you, understood? Hinata said, standing up and placing her hands on her hips. Still fixed under the fierce look she had, Naruto simply nodded and moved to sit by the fire. As she returned to preparing their meal, she sent one last remark over her shoulder to try and pull him out of his funk, you know, you might be the most stubborn person I know. She commented with a smirk on her face. Naruto simply glanced up at her and slowly she watched the smirk she loved so much grace his face again. That is what I want to see my little nightmare Hinata said, using Kurunai's pet name for him. Satisfied with the playful pout she got, she returned to her cooking with a blissful smile on her face. The rest of the evening went by as usual. Hinata and Naruto traded small talk about their missions, shared in the horror of reminiscing about Tora, and simply enjoyed each other's company. The little cave never felt more like a home than it did tonight. As Hinata was leaving for the night, she stopped at the entrance and tugged on Naruto's wrist, pulling him closer. She fixed her gaze on him once more and spoke in a soft but demanding tone You better come back to me from this mission you hear? You owe me a cinnamon bun when you get back. Naruto looked at her with slight confusion in his eyes, when did this happen? I don't remember losing a bet. I decided that I want you to take me out and buy me a cinnamon bun when you get back. It is the least you can do after leaving for so long, she replied, a playful smirk crossing her face. Before letting him reply she reaching up on her toes and planted a chaste kiss on his cheek, before turning on her heels and walking away. Just before she would pass into the forest and out of sight of the cave, she stopped and looked back. Locking eyes with the redhead leaning against the cave wall, she smiled softly at him one last time and mouthed to sweet dreams before making her way back to the village. As Dazuna approached the gate with his protection details leader, he couldn't help but feel nervous. Reaching the gate, his nerves seemed to be confirmed upon seeing three kids still wet behind their ears waiting on him. First was a pink-haired girl in a short red kimono. She seemed to fawn over one of her teammates constantly. That doesn't seem promising. A fangirl instead of a ninja, just my luck. The old drunk thought. Taking a swig of his sake bottle, he glanced at the second member. He had black spiky hair and a constant scowl fixed to his face. He was wearing a blue shirt and white shorts. Doesn't seem like anything special. Certainly seems to brood a lot. Hope he can focus when the time comes. Despite the old bridge builder's outward appearance and constant drinking, he fancied himself to be rather insightful, even when on the bottle. This third member seems interesting at least, Tazuna thought as he scanned the third and final member of the team. He had wild dark red hair swept back and held with his headband. His outfit was a typical Anbu outfit, black sleeveless undershirt with a grey combat vest over top, black pants and black sandals. He wore grey bracers on his forearms and had the Anbu tattoo on his left shoulder. The boy was leaning against the gate with his eyes closed and a smirk fixed on his face. I'm assuming that this kid is ex-Anbu judging by his get up and tattoo, at least one of these Jinan has wiped the milk off their lips. Let's make haste eh? That bridge ain't gonna build itself, Tazuna spoke before making his way out of the village. H hey! What do you Maya Sakura screeched before a hand on her shoulder stopped her. Looking over she seen Naruto holding her from continuing her rampage. Don't yell at the client, he can think what he wants. Prove him wrong with performing your mission ya? Yeah? Naruto spoke before stuffing his hands in his pockets, closing his eyes and following behind Tazna. Sparing a glance over his shoulder at his teammates he called out oi. You two coming or not? Sasuke and Sakura jolted and hurried to catch up to Kakashi, Kazuna, and Naruto. This was going to be a long mission with the company of Naruto and Kakashi. Team 7 had been traveling for two days in relative silence. Whenever Sakura would try and break the silence by cuddling up to Sasuke, he would grunt and move away, seemingly content with the way things had been going. Man, why did I get stuck with three silent people for my team? I haven't had a decent conversation in days Sakura lamented. Suddenly she felt the atmosphere shift slightly, and noticed Naruto was walking slightly more alert than he had been for the previous part of their journey. Wondering what was going on she glanced at Kakashi and Sasuke, finding Sasuke still the same as ever, and Kakashi still with his nose stuffed into his orange book. Hmm wonder what is on Naruto's mind, she pondered. Just as she finished her thought two people jumped from a puddle and wrapped Kakashi in a bladed chain shredding him to pieces. Sakura screamed in fright as Sasuke jumped in front of Tazna. Glancing over at Naruto she noticed his eyes open and his dojutsu active. 
Time seemed to slow down as Sakura looked back at her two attackers. What she witnessed next shocked her. One of the demon brothers stood frozen as the other raised his chain arm up. With a flick of his wrist the chain wrapped around his brother. Ha, gotcha now filthy Janan, he yelled and with a powerful yank of his arm, he shredded his brother to pieces. Huh? B brother? What happened? As the remaining demon brother turned to look at the gathering of ninja Naruto dashed forward with his hand pulled back and a seal matrix swirling around his fingers. Naruto appeared in front of the missing nin's face and locked eyes. As his tomoe swirled he shoved his hand forward applying the sealing matrix to his torso. Sakura watched, mouth open and surprisingly at a loss for words as Naruto turned around, deactivating his dojutsu. She spared a glance back at the remaining enemy and watched as the sealing matrix applied to his chest spread across his body, immobilizing him and knocking him out. Oi, everyone alright? Naruto asked, bringing Sakura out of her stupor. Well well well, good job my cute little Janan. Excellent reaction time Naruto. Now Tazuna, I think we need to have a little chat. Those are two A-rank missing nin from Kiri. Why would they be targeting you? Kakashi asked as he turned to a profusely sweating Tazuna. I'll be taking my team back to Konoha. You may accompany us if you wish and have the mission parameters changed appropriately. Wait, you don't understand the situation. I'll tell you everything, just listen please, Tazuna pleaded, earning a nod from Kakashi before he spilled the beans. I see. That is indeed a dire situation, however the fact still remains that we were hired for a C-rank escort mission and this is at least an A-rank mission considering the political repercussions of failure. I will leave it up to my team to decide if we head back to Konoha or continue the mission, Kakashi spoke as he glanced at his team. I think we should help, we can't abandon the citizens being encroached on my gato, Sakura said, with a hint of a waver in her voice. I don't care either way, but I see the merit in completing the mission. It would be good for the village, Sasuke chimed in. I, I think completing this mission would be in the best interests of our village as well, Naruto spoke, making the decision unanimous. Very well. You can thank my team for having the compassion I lack, Tazna. But understand, from here on out, we play by my rules, Kakashi threatened. Tazna simply nodded and gulped, before taking a nervous swig of his sake. Naruto up front, eyes open. Sakura to the right, Sasuke the left. I'll take the rear. We move silently and swiftly until we reach our destination. Seal the demon brothers and let's go, Kakashi barked. Shadow clone jutsu, Naruto said as four clones appeared. You guys spread out and scout ahead in a fan formation, anything suspicious and you dispel, got it? With nods, the group was off, followed by the diamond formation of Team 7. The trip to Nami no Kuni was uneventful. The team performed their roles silently and efficiently. As the team was passing by a lake on the last stretch to Tazana's home, a thick mist started to roll in. Stopping and growing alert, Kakashi took charge. All three of you surround Tazna. I believe Zabuzai is going to make his move very shortly. An ominous voice rang out from seemingly all directions, How acute of you Kakashi of the Sharingan, but do you think you can really defend your team and my target? Leave the bridge builder and turn back if you want to keep your lives, the voice spoke as a large amount of killing intent was leaked on the group. Sakura dropped to her knees as Sasuke grunted and pulled out a kunai. Naruto crouched, activated his eyes and prepped two incapacitation few injutsus at his fingertips. My eyes won't work in this mist unless he gets into striking range. I'll have to act quickly, Naruto thought as he tried to utilize all of his senses to anticipate the impending strike. Kakashi lifted his headband off of his eye, revealing his Sharingan. He pulled a kunai out and got into a defensive stance. Where should I strike? So many options to chose from, the voice spoke. How? About? Here, Zabuza shouted as a giant sword came into view above Naruto. Naruto leapt backwards as he changed to his explosion fuinjutsu. As the sword came down it grazed down Naruto's left eye, face and down to the middle of his chest. As the sword cleaved into his flesh, Naruto shut his eye, grunted and slammed his hands onto the blade of the sword. The seals appeared and showed the number 3 in the circle. Naruto dropped to one knee and covered his left eye. Damn I couldn't make eye contact. It is too risky to leave an opening like that again with this dangerous of an opponent. I was careless. Sakura gasped at the amount of blood falling from Naruto. Are we all going to die here? She steeled her resolve upon hearing Kakashi whisper to them thanks Naruto, that was all I needed. Suddenly a large explosion went off to the group's left, about 20 meters away. The force of the blast blew the mist away, and Kakashi pounced. Weaving hand signs as he ran towards his target, he jumped as he heard a shout of fire style, great fireball jutsu. 
The giant ball of fire passed underneath Kakashi as he finished his last hand sign. Watching the fireball hit Zabuza, Kakashi released his ninjutsu. Lightning style, lightning fang. Firing it to the right of Sasuke's fireball. As the water cloned Sasuke it hit dispelled, Kakashi's ninjutsu struck true. Zabuza grunted in pain. We're not done yet Zabuza, Naruto spoke, dashing towards his temporarily stunned target. The lightning coursing through Zabuza's body prevented him from moving as Naruto slammed both of his hands into his chest. As the Matrix incapacitated Zabuza, two senbones struck his neck, causing him to fall limp. Thank you for neutralizing my target, I've been on his trail for weeks now, a voice spoke, emerging from the trees. Team 7 watched as Akiri Hunter Nin walked out and examined the body. Again, thank you for your services, the Hunter Nin spoke before disappearing in a splash with the body. Kakashi, that wasn't protocol. I think we'll be seeing them again soon," Naruto commented grimly. After seeing the nod from Kakashi, Naruto keeled over, unconscious from his blood loss. Sakura, pick up your teammate. Is your place close Tazuna? Kakashi asked. Yes it is, follow me it's just up ahead, the builder replied before leading them away from the lake. It only took another 45 minutes for the group to reach their destination. Tsunami, we have guests. I need you to get me the med kit and some spare bedding. Tazuna spoke as he entered his home. What do you owe oh my? I'll be right back. Lay him down upstairs please, she ordered as she hustled to retrieve the med kit. Sakura nodded and continued up the stairs. By now she was soaked in her teammate's blood. Laying him down and moving away from the bed, Tsunami entered the room. Go clean yourself up, I can patch him up, the older woman said as she knelt beside her new charge. When Sakura didn't move Tsunami turned around and fixed her gaze on the girl. I said go get cleaned up. He will not die, his pulse is strong, oddly enough, now go. You look like a walking morgue. Sakura looked down, and nodded once more before leaving the room. After a couple hours, Tsunami returned downstairs to see the grim looks on her visitor's faces. He'll be fine, just needs to rest. How he is still alive and his pulse was so strong after losing as much blood as Sakura had on her is beyond me though. You ninja are something else she said, addressing the apprehensive looks as she moved to retrieve a cup of coffee. So, care to introduce me to our visitors? Ah yes, this is Team 7 from Konoha, they are the ninja who have saved my life twice already. Kakashi, Sakura, and Sasuke. Naruto is the boy upstairs. They will be staying here until the bridge is done, Tazuna motioned to the corresponding people as he introduced them. I see, you have my thanks for saving my grandfather's life twice. If you need anything don't hesitate to ask. I know a decent amount of first aid, since the town doctors have been removed by Gato's thugs I had no choice but to learn for my family, Tsunami smiled. With a bow she turned to the fridge. Now allow me to make you all dinner, I'm sure you're hungry after your journey. The morning after reaching Tazuna's house, Kakashi set out a routine. Each day Sakura and Sasuke would swap between guarding the bridge and Tazuna, or training with Kakashi. This routine continued for the next week while Naruto slept. Hey Kakashi-sensei. Why hasn't Naruto woken up yet? Tsunami said it would only take a day or two. Was he like this with recovery in Anbu? Sakura asked while sitting down for a lunch break. No, this is unlike him, in Anbu his recovery speeds were unmatched, I don't know what is going on. All we can do is wait, he is stable so he might have some internal issues hindering him. Kakashi cryptically explained. He is probably dealing with the QB, but I can't let Sakura know that. Naruto's Mindscape Naruto woke up laying back against a tree on the edge of a field. Groggily wiping his eyes of the residue left from his extended sleep, he slowly rose and took in his surroundings. A breeze was blowing, however the normally blue sky was replaced with grey swirling clouds. The air was thick with latent energy, and Naruto knew a storm was coming. With a sigh he stretched lazily before sauntering over to the large pit in the middle of the field. I thought you didn't like it when it rained QB? Why are you keeping me in here long enough to cause a storm? Naruto questioned, staring down into the pit. The massive fox stared back at him with one glowing red eye silently. With another sigh, Naruto climbed out onto the middle of the cage and sat down, dangling his legs into the cage with a seal tag right in front of him. You know, you still haven't told me your name. Why not? It must get lonely in here. The large fox closed his eye and let out a puff of air from his mouth still refusing to acknowledge the presence of his jailer. Well since I am stuck here, and it doesn't look like you will let me return anytime soon, I might as well entertain you with a story. When I was younger, Naruto started to ramble on. He waved his arms in the air throughout his story, attempting to add some flair to it. His signature smirk crossed his face when he caught the fox stand up. Pausing his story he looked down through the bars, 
seeing his feet mere inches away from the QB's nose. Why do you insist on aggravating me with that same damn story every time you are here? All you do is go to Ijarakus and spill ramen on Ayame. For the love of Kami it is a boring ass story. Stop telling it. The fox growled out. To further show his disdain for the mundane story he has heard at least ten times, he plastered a feral snarl onto his face. To the fox's surprise the boy smiled, not one of his patented smirks, but a genuine smile. I didn't think you listened to my stories, I'm glad you care so much. Now it's your turn, tell me a story, the boy requested. I am not a scribe or a bard. I will do no such thing. Leave me be. What is your name? If you won't tell me a story at least tell me your name. What good would my name do you? What use does a jailer have for the name of his prisoner? I always like to know the names of my friends. I have so few, and you've been with me the longest. Why wouldn't I want to know your name? A look of shock crossed the fox's face. Friend? I've never been considered a friend before? And why would this boy consider me of all things a friend? As the fox dwelled on the mixture of feelings so foreign to him, he didn't notice the boy picking at the seal tag on his cage. It didn't escape Naruto's notice that the looming storm clouds had started to disperse, allowing several pillars of light to grace the clearing. With a smirk on his face, he continued picking at the seal, waiting on his answer. Kurama, nice to meet you Kurama, I am Naruto Uzumaki, he replied. His smirk turned into a smile as he yanked on the tag, letting it fall into the pit and onto Kurama's nose. Call it a gut feeling but I think things will go much smoother like this. As Kurama turned his shocked expression up towards the boy, Naruto started to fade away. I'm trusting you. Don't make me regret it. Hinata forgave me, so don't give her a reason to take that back, and without a sound, Naruto faded from his mindscape. Very well, Naruto. Kurama thought to himself as he settled back into his pit and fell asleep. Tazuna's home. As Naruto stirred himself awake, he found his sight was off. Confused by the weird sensation, he opened his right eye. Yep, that one works as intended. Closing his right eye and opening his left eye, he found nothing but darkness. Hmm, that is odd. Bringing a hand to his left eye, he felt bandages. Tugging on them slightly, his vision showed cracks of light. Phew, didn't want to be blind in one eye. That would have all sorts of problems. I'd end up looking like Kakashi-sensei. With a shudder Naruto ascended to a sitting position. Unraveling his bandages on his face so he could see. He took in his surroundings. He was currently in a foreign room on a bed. Looking out the window he could see the sea, which confused him. I don't remember being by a sea. The last thing I remember is... Zabuza. Shit. Slowly standing up, he found himself dressed only in a pair of grey sweatpants. Hmm, hope I didn't get taken advantage of while I was out. Oh well. Naruto shrugged. The less he knew about something like that happening, the better. Slowly making his way out of the room and down the stairs. He found the house to be vacant. With a sigh he walked outside and down to the water's edge. He rolled up the legs of his pants and wadded into the water up to just below his knees. After finding his gaze lost on the foggy horizon for an unknown amount of time, he risked a glance down at the surface. Staring back up at him was a messy mop of red hair that fell down to his shoulders, and blue eyes. What took him by surprise was the long rough scar that started at his left eye and traveled down to his neck where it ran into some more bandages. Taking the bandages from his torso, he followed the scar down to his upper left pectoral. Hmm I see, this is the result of a demon sword. I guess I can't heal perfectly from everything. I'll have to be careful when I face him again. Accepting his new features, Naruto shrugged and turned to make his way back to the house. Settling himself in the hammock on the front porch, he sighed one last time and closed his eyes. A little nap can't hurt can it? Kakashi and Sakura appeared at the bridge to find Sasuke working on his chakra control exercise of making a leaf spin on his forehead. He and Sakura had managed to learn to make it stick on their forehead, which turned into them getting the hang of tree walking. The next step was water walking, but his control wasn't good enough yet. Kakashi had assigned him the leaf spinning on his forehead exercise to help him practice control while it was his day to guard Tazna. I think that's enough to call it a day, don't you agree Tazna? Kakashi spoke from behind his book. And good job Sasuke, you are pretty close to getting it to spin. I'm sure by the end of tomorrow you'll be walking on shallow water. Receiving a nod from Tazuna and a grunt from Sasuke, Kakashi took it as a okay for them to head back to Tazuna's for the night. At the end of their short walk back, all four were in for a surprise at the side on the front porch. Sitting in a chair smiling and knitting was Tsunami. Beside her was a familiar body lounging in a hammock. He had his hands behind his head casually, his eyes closed and his ever-present smirk racing his lips. Kakashi I smiled as Sakura and Sasuke quickened their pace slightly to greet their teammate. Sasuke arrived first and walked over to the boy. 
Gave us quite the scare for a bit there. You were stable and seemed healthy but weren't waking up. Yeah, I figured you guys could use a head start in training while we wait on the bridge to be built, came the reed head snarky reply. Sasuke scoffed to mask his chuckle. With a wave he turned to go inside. As Sakura walked up she gasped. Naruto noticed her eyes lingering on the new scar he was sporting and waved her off. It's nothing. My fault really for leaving an opening as bait. I should leave that part out when I tell Kurunai-sensei and Hinata-chan though. Naruto trailed off, a cold shiver running through his body. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that part out. Well, it's about time you decided to wake up and quit being a lazy ass. You're on guard shift tomorrow now, Sakura retorted before following Sasuke inside. Tsunami frowned at the conversation. I'm sorry I could stitch you up better so the scar wasn't there. She spoke more under her breath than anything. Eh, don't worry about it. I doubt even the most experienced doctors could stop this from scarring. A demon sword has certain effects to its wounds. Naruto replied. You did a great job, as I am still breathing. Thank you, really. Tsunami simply nodded and went back to her menial task. As Kakashi walked up he shared a knowing look with Naruto. The boy just nodded in reply lightly, giving Kakashi all the answers he needed. Two months passed without incident. Team 7 integrated Naruto into the rotation and manipulated it a bit to allow Sasuke and Sakura to get more training in, seeing as Naruto did not gain as much from Kakashi as they did. Currently Naruto is on guard duty, while Sasuke is training on his own and Sakura is working with Kakashi. Dazuna estimated another month to complete the bridge, which would put them at another five weeks to get back to Konoha if no unforeseen circumstances arose. Eating at the back of Naruto's and Kakashi's minds however was the hunter nin that took Zabuzai away. A gut feeling told the ex anbu pair that they would be seeing Zabuzai and the hunter nin again before they left Nami no Kuni. As Sasuke was taking a break from his ninjutsu practice, he spotted a snake make its way out of the bushes. That is odd, I haven't seen a snake the whole time I have been in Nami no Kuni. Is it a trap? Growing weary of the snake, Sasuke continued his lunch, but kept the snake in the corner of his eye. He was thoroughly caught off guard when the snake started to shift into the form of a man. Hello Sasuke-kun, you made it quite hard to find you, a slimy voice almost hissed at him. Jumping up and pulling a kunai out, Sasuke took a defensive stance before replying, Who are you? And how do you know who I am? As he waited for an answer he surveyed the man in front of him. He had long straight black hair, and a very white complexion. His eyes were accented by purple paint that ended near the end of his nose. He was dressed in an on-tan shirt that had the front and back extended down to his knees. By far the most peculiar thing about his appearance was the thick purple rope he used as a belt, which was tied in a very large bow at his back. Who I am isn't important right now, but what is important is that I can offer you power. A kind of power you won't find in Konoha. A kind of power that will allow you to avenge your clan. Sasuke replied with silence, earning a smirk from the odd snake man. I see I have your attention. All I require from you right now is to accept my gift. When the time comes, you will be called upon to leave your village, the gift I will give you will guide you to me. Do you accept? Something told Sasuke that even if he refused, he would receive this gift anyways. Nodding slightly, he was shocked to see the man's neck elongate towards him at alarming speeds. Before Sasuke could react, the man had bitten him on his left shoulder, leaving a large ceiling matrix, which almost immediately shrunk down to three tomoe. Now if you survive tonight, you'll be called a pod soon. When that time comes, seek me out. The mark will guide you, the man said, before he slipped away into the trees. Sasuke didn't even pay attention to him leaving, the pain he was in was consuming all of his attention. He lay writhing on the ground in agony, the pain too much to allow him to even scream. The minutes ticked by agonizingly slow. Eventually the minutes turned to hours, and daylight turned into darkness. As the sun rose the next day. Sasuke felt the cooling sensation of relief spread across his body. He survived the first trial on his way to vengeance. Returning to the house in the morning, Sasuke received some worried looks from his team. I got caught up in my training and ended up passing out from exhaustion. Sorry. He replied with a wave, making his way upstairs for some much needed rest. The rest of the room just shrugged, the boy had been pushing himself pretty hard the past couple months. He was striving to catch up to Naruto and that was no easy feat. The last month of construction passed by quickly. As the bridge neared completion Kakashi and Naruto found themselves growing more and more anxious. Zabuzo had yet to make his move, and it was looking more and more like it was going to be a showdown on the final day of construction. As the final few days neared, Kakashi insisted everyone be present for guard duty each day. 
They needed to be at their best for when Zabuza and his accomplice showed. On the last day of construction, during the group's walk across the bridge to the end, Kakashi's suspicions were confirmed as a thick heavy mist rolled in. The ominous feeling lingering in the air was all too familiar for the group. Sakura, stay with Tazna, Naruto and Sasuke, I want both of you to handle the accomplice, I will deal with Zabuza, Kakashi ordered, lifting his headband at the same time. Sakura nodded and took her position in front of Tazna. Naruto activated his eyes and prepped his fuinjutsu while Sasuke readied a kunai. Remember team, we are to protect Tazuna, that is the mission. Do not get separated. This mist will easily disorientate you, Kakashi advised. You know how to keep your wits about you and my mist Kakashi, sound advice indeed. Too bad it won't save your precious little Jinan from my protege. He will dismantle them. A familiar voice echoed from every direction at once. Haku, kill them all. I will handle the Jonin. A blade materialized out of thin air as Kakashi raised his kunai to block. Naruto and Sasuke narrowed their eyes and strained their senses, waiting for their opponent. A mask materialized from the mist in between Naruto and Sasuke, the figure slashing at both of them with Senbone. Sasuke blocked while Naruto ducked and shoved his hand forward towards his assailant's leg. Haku lifted his leg and kicked it towards Sasuke, hitting him in the stomach and pushing him back. You know, I didn't expect all of you to be on the bridge. I can't imagine Gato to be honorable enough to leave the Builder's family alone, Zabuza taunted. Sharing a look, Sasuke dove into combat with Haku as Naruto disengaged. With a quick hand sign Naruto shouted Shadow Clone Jutsu. Five clones appeared in front of him. Two of you protect Tazuna, the other three get to the house now. Aye aye sir. They echoed before dashing away. Refocusing on his opponent, Naruto watched as Sasuke struggled against Haku. The kid was good, very good. He prepped his fuinjutsu before dashing back into the fray. He couldn't cast Genjutsu effectively in the mist, so that left him with his Uzumaki inheritance. Welcome back, unfortunately you have returned at an inopportune time, for this is taking too long. I will end this now. Ice style, demonic mirroring ice crystals, Haku shouted. With the end of his jutsu, a plethora of ice mirrors materialized from the mist and encased both Sasuke and Naruto in a dome. Haku entered the mirrors and was reflected upon each mirror in the dome. No one can escape my ultimate technique. I apologize, but I must kill you now. I will not fail Zabuza-sama. Haku began dashing from mirror to mirror, raining Senbone down onto his victims. Sasuke and Naruto did the best they could to defend themselves, but the Senbone seemed to come from all directions. Slowly but surely, the boys were becoming pincushions. We can't keep this up forever, do you have anything in your bag of tricks Naruto? Sasuke asked. I can think of something but I need a few minutes. Can you hold on solo for that long? Sasuke nodded and steeled his resolve. He watched as Naruto disappeared in a puff. Huh, Shadow Clone? Veiled, here goes nothing. After the clone disappeared, Sasuke found himself being riddled with even more Senbone than before. The absence of his teammate's clone is a shield leaving more openings. Well I have to try something. Fire style, great fireball jutsu, Sasuke shouted aiming his ninjutsu at one of the mirrors. It seemed to waver a bit. Maybe if I continue to hit it. And so Sasuke continued to rain fire down upon the single mirror, hoping it was doing something. If he could break one mirror he would be okay. Exhausting most of his chakra, Sasuke could see that he wasn't making any headway. As if his realization wasn't enough, a senbone hit him in the pressure point on his shoulder, causing his right arm to glimp. Damn, and all because I'm too weak. I don't even have my Sharingan yet. Pitiful. Sasuke dropped to his knees, unable to muster the strength to block anymore. Looking up he watched as Haku came halfway out of his mirror. It looks like you have been abandoned. Now you will die. With those words Haku threw a handful of Senbo named at Sasuke's neck. As Sasuke watched the needles fly towards him, time seemed to slow. I was abandoned again. Just like Itachi. I'm weak that is why. I don't want to be weak anymore. I need to get stronger. And with those thoughts his eyes flared. He pumped chakra to his eyes, and they turned blood red, one to moe around the pupil. At the last moment Sasuke dodged the needles. What? Sharngan? My job just got a lot harder, Haku thought. Merging with his mirrors again, he rained more senbone at the boy. Less seemed to hit him than before, but some still met their mark. It would take longer but the outcome would be the same. Haku smiled, victory was still assured. At least that is what he thought until his was frozen halfway out of his mirror. Looking around he could see his mirrors melting. As he looked towards Sasuke to see if he was the culprit, he was shocked to see Zabuza instead, riddled with Senbone. What? 
Zabuzasama? I was, I was attacking the Uchiha, not you. He muttered, You failed me Haku, you disgraced me. Now we will both perish here. Zabuza spit out. Haku shivered at the murderous glare he was receiving from his master. Before Haku could say anything else, a cold, chilling laugh sounded out. It was sinister, and the air filled with a murderous chakra. The density of it was so thick, Haku was struggling to breathe. He panicked and looked around wildly for the source. He couldn't find it, it was coming from everywhere. As Haku glanced back at the mirror he was stuck in, he seen Zabuza's form. You failed. Kill yourself. You have disgraced me enough. At least do me the favor of taking your own life. The mirror spat out in venom. B but Zabuza-sama, I I didn't mean to attack you. I. The sound of that sinister and mocking laughter cut Haku off. It was driving him mad. His own master was mocking his weakness. He couldn't get the voices out of his head. Slowly but surely, Haku brought a needle up to his neck. I'm sorry Zabuza-sama. Allow me to repent for my failures. As he finished his last sentence, the boy drove his needle into his neck, directly into his spinal column. The genjutsu dropped, and revealed an immobilized but otherwise fine Sasuke, kneeled beside Naruto who was shrouded in Kurama's chakra, with two tails swinging back and forth behind him. The body of Haku dropped with a thud as the mirror was shattered and dissipated into nothing. At the same time the mist cleared away, revealing Zabuza pinned by eight ninkan across from Kakashi who had a sizable gash on his chest. Well well well. Looks like you failed again Zabuza. Good thing I decided to bring my army to make sure the job got done. I'm glad I won't have to pay you either, not that I ever planned on it, a small man spoke from the end of the bridge. Gotta I assume? Kakashi asked. Naruto, would you please take care of that trash, I'm a bit drained at the moment. I. Naruto nodded before turning towards the advancing mob. He flared his chakra and the tomoe around his eyes spun. The moment they did, Gato's army put their swords to their necks and slit their throats. The sight was eerie, and as Sakura watched, she couldn't help but lean over the side of the bridge and let loose her stomach's contents. W what did you do to my men? Gato screamed. Naruto simply ignored the man and glanced at Kakashi, asking a silent question. Receiving a nod from his sensei, Naruto pulled out a scroll, applied a few injutsu matrix to his hand and placed his hand on the scroll. He walked up to Gato next and shoved his matrix-covered hand into the man's chest sealing him within the scroll. Returning to his group, Naruto smirked at Tazna. Well, should we finish this bridge or what? With the capture of Gato and defeat of his army, the town had finally been liberated. Haku died at the hands of Naruto, and Zabuza succumbed to his wounds at the hands of Kakashi. Lacking any more threats, Tazna insisted on Team 7 staying for a couple more nights in the town to celebrate. The party held in Team 7's honor lasted for the afternoon of the second day and carried over well into the night. Naruto. Sakura and Sasuke are front and center in the local tavern, with many of the town folk surrounding them peppering them with questions or funneling them food and drink. The trio attempted to avoid consuming liquor, recalling their sensei's lecture on the vices of shinobi, but eventually the villagers wore them down. With a bottle of sake in his hands, Naruto smirked at Sakura and Sasuke. Giving them a wink he substituted with a shadow clone and proceeded to make his way to the outskirts of town. Letting his wandering body take him where it pleased. Naruto delved into his thoughts. This mission sure has been eye-opening. I'm going to have to get stronger in case I come across more swordsmen of the mist or demon swords. They seem to have a larger effect on me than normal people. It must be linked to Kurama. As Naruto continued to ponder he found himself on the start of the bridge. With a shrug he sat down and leaned against the side of it. Speaking of Kurama, I wonder if I did the right thing with the seal. I'm sure he would enjoy the space, I know I would hate being locked up in a cage. I guess all I can do is hope it doesn't backfire on me. For the record, I do appreciate your actions with the seal kit. You will get no trouble from me, as long as you can continue to learn to control my power and not lose yourself to my anger. The deep voice of Kurama resonated in Naruto's mind. You can hear my thoughts? Well that would have been good to know earlier. Always the secret of one aren't you? Silence. Oh that's cute, drop a bombshell like mind reading on me and then go back to your nap. Real mature Kurama. And I'm supposed to be the kid. Naruto thought with an eye roll. Taking a swig of the sake bottle in his hand, Naruto leaned his head back and stared up into the night sky. Letting the alcohol numb his senses he simply took in the stars, feeling tranquil for the first time in a while. Eager to get home are you? A feminine voice rang out, pulling Naruto from his almost catatonic state. Ah, sorry didn't see you there. I'm more anxious than eager. I've got a lot to work on, and I'm sure I'll get an earful for the risks I took during this mission. He trailed off as his left hand ghosted over his cheek. Name's Amy, may I? 
gesturing to the spot beside Naruto, he nodded passing her the bottle as she plopped down next to him. Thanks. I've been coming out here every other night or so since the bridge was started. Something about it gives me hope, you know? Naruto simply nodded, understanding the plight of the village he was currently in. So, why aren't you eager to get home? You've been gone for months now and I'm sure your family misses you, Amy continued on. Catching his momentary downward glance, she opened her mouth to apologize but was beaten to it. Don't worry, you didn't know. My parents died when I was born. Life of a shinobi I guess. I came to terms with it long ago, he spoke. He had a slightly far off look in his eyes as he looked up into the night again. Well I'm sure you've got people who love and care for you. How couldn't they, you're a fine young man, she replied handing him the bottle. Taking another swig he began in a downcast tone, there are certain circumstances, you could say, that I have found myself in due to the details of my birth. They tend to keep most people away from me. There are a select few though, that seem to tolerate my presence. She scoffed. I see, you don't think they really care for you? I'm sure you'd be surprised. I'll bet they love you unconditionally, these select few you speak of. For the first time since she arrived, Naruto glanced over and really took notice of the person beside him. She had long dark brown hair that framed her slender face and brown eyes. She wore a simple green dress and black sandals. She looked about 17. Average is how he would describe her. Average in every sense of the word. But she is nice. I don't remember the last time I met a nice stranger. Naruto smiled. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe they do truly care for me. I'll have to spy on them and find out when I get back, he joked. His jest turned a giggle from the girl. He took one more drink before passing the bottle. You shinobi are an odd bunch, is it just your team, or are all of your kind like you? She inquired, taking another sip. Well, I wouldn't say many are like me per se but most shinobi are a bit off by civilian standards. With what we see in our line of work, most of it is a coping mechanism. I am not without mine either. I guess we just see the world a bit differently, he shrugged. Well for what it's worth, I'm sorry you have to live like that. You're so young and you've already seen so much. I'm thankful for all you do, but I'm sorry as well. She drifted off when he shook his head. Like I said, don't be sorry. It's my choice and I don't regret it. If I regretted all of the choices I've had to make I'd have gone crazy by now. I'll find somewhere I belong eventually Amy, so don't feel sorry for me. The life of a shinobi is a lonely one, and I've accepted that, Naruto said with a hint of sadness in his voice. Amy simply nodded and handed him the bottle, watching him take another hefty swig before she spoke again. Well, if it ever gets to be too much, or you need to escape, come back here. This village, and I personally, will welcome you with open arms and without question. Naruto took another long draw of the bottle before handing it back one last time. Thanks Amy, you're pretty kind. But I feel kinda tired now. And with that he passed out, falling over and landing his head in her lap. She let out a squeak of surprise before a gentle smile graced her face. As she set the bottle aside she brought her hands up to run her fingers through his hair. Mmm good night Hina-chan. The boy purred. It seems you do have someone special to you. She thought as she settled in for the night. Sweet dreams. As the sun starts to rise above Nami no Kuni, a figure stirred on the bridge. Ah. Looks like he is waking up. I hope he isn't too hungover, Amy thought with a giggle. Naruto stirred slowly, scrunching his eyes. Nnnnnn good morning Hina, Ta. Huh? He questioned as he stared up at a brown-eyed girl. Well, it appears that I don't handle my sake very well if this situation and my headache is anything to go by. As he sat up he turned to her and asked, Did we um... You know... Do anything last night? I don't mean to offend but I don't recall falling asleep. The girl giggled again with more mirth this time and replied no, we sat and talked before you passed out and fell on my lap. I decided to keep you company as all. Ah I see, Amy right? I think it's coming back to me. Yes, now who is this Hina-chan you were moaning about last night hmm? She must be quiet to look her to have a rambling heart like yours thinking about her. A profuse blush crossed the boy's face, almost matching his hair color. I, um, she's a, she is one of the few people who is close to me as all, he mumbled out. Well, from the sounds of it she certainly has to be quite close to you, Amy said with a wink. Now let's get you to your team so you can get back to your Hina Chanya? Come on. Standing up Amy offered him a hand, pulling him up to begin their search for Team 7. Sasuke and Sakura were seated on the front porch of Tazana's house, waiting for the arrival of their last member. Someone is coming from town, I see red hair and brown hair. The redhead must be him, but who? Is. Oh my. That sly dog, Kakashi spoke 
leaving the Jinan to connect the dots. Sakura blushed as Sasuke let out a grunt before they all stood up and readied to take off. As Naruto approached his team, he turned back and waved to his companion. With a smile and a wave back she turned and headed into town. So, that is why we have been waiting a little longer to return to Konoha. Can't say you didn't earn it, Kakashi said with a wink. Now let's get a move on, we should be home in a couple days if we make good time. With that Team 7 was off, happy to be traveling at a shinobi pace this time. And that is the summary of our mission Hokage-sama, Kakashi said as he finished his report. I see, Naruto do you have the scrolls containing the heads of the demon brothers and Zabuza for their bounties, along with the scroll that has the sealed gato? Naruto nodded and placed them on the desk. Excellent. I will be upgrading this mission to an A rank due to the political ramifications of failure and the assassins after your charge. Unfortunately since I did not receive payment from Tazana for an A rank mission, the only bonus you will get is from the bounties. I have a feeling however that the bounties will more than make up the cost. You are all dismissed. Naruto a moment if you would, Hiruzen said, waving his hand at the team. Yes Jigi? Naruto said after his team had left. This new scar you have, it is a result of the demon sword correct? I. I was out for a week which as you know is very unlike me. I spent some time with Kurama though so that might be why. I think demon swords have a rather adverse effect on me because of my current resident. Naruto spoke. Seeing the questioning gaze he clarified, Kurama is the QB Gigi. Ah, uh, I wasn't aware that the Baiju had names. Good to know. Well I don't know much about the effects of demon swords on Jin Shuriki, but if you discover more do let me know, Hiruzen requested. Oh and Hinata was in here a week ago inquiring as to your return date. I'd suggest going to see her in Kurinai. With a nod, Naruto disappeared from the office. Appearing on the outskirts of the village Naruto made his way towards training ground 8. Man, I am not gonna get off easy today. Valep I guess I should get this over with. Naruto decided as he arrived at the training grounds. Oh Naruto-kun, I see the. Kurinai started, however she quickly stopped her greeting when she took a look at the boy. Feeling a sense of foreboding. Shino and Kiba backed away slowly as Hinata stood with her mouth open. Taking this as their cue to leave Kiba and Shino snuck away quietly. He's dead. He is so dead. They both thought. Staring at the boy in front of her, Hinata carefully ghosted her hand over Naruto's cheek. She dragged her hand down following the scar all the way to the still cut open Nanbu armor. Tears started to form in her eyes as she looked up at him, silently pleading for an explanation. Care to explain your new look Naruto-kun? Kurinai asked her tone leaving little room for negotiation. We had a little complication with a certain demon swordsman of the mist. I'm fine, we took care of it, he said with a shrug and a wave of his hand. He attempted to change the subject with care to grab some barbecue? I haven't eaten yet today. As he turned to lead them into the village a voice stopped him in his tracks. Oh no you don't mister. Get back here and explain. Damn, I guess I should have known that wouldn't work. Veilp it was a good life, and so I woke up a week later. No big deal. I'll tell you about the rest of the mission over food, he said nonchalantly. Smack. He felt a sudden stinging on his face, and as he brought his hand up to the left side of his face it felt hot. Looking down he met Hinata's glare. Her eyes were burning a hole in his soul, and he felt guilty for what he had done. He should have known she would be worried. Hina umph Naruto got out as he found himself on his back with a teary Hinata on top of him, her head buried in his chest. Promise me, she demanded. What? Promise me. She cut him off. I'm sorry. I promise I won't be so reckless in the future, Naruto whispered, wrapping his arms around her. Kurinai smiled at the sight. Now, let's go get some food ya? On me, she exclaimed before heading off into town. As Naruto and Hinata stood and started walking into town, Hinata clasped her hands around Naruto's arm. Receiving a quizzical glance, she simply said, you owe me for scaring me. Naruto just shrugged and gave her a nod. And you still owe me a cinnamon bun too, she whispered under her breath. It didn't escape Naruto's ears however as he smirked. I guess Amy was right. As the winter came to an end, the village geared up to host the Chunin exams. Kakashi had given his team a heads up he would be nominating them for the exams. Naruto decided to work on his Fuinjutsu and attempt to learn the Hiraishin. Kakashi spent his time with Sasuke and Sakura working on their ninjutsu and taijutsu skills. Naruto found most of his learning to be self-taught as Kakashi wasn't a Fuinjutsu master and didn't know the Hiraishin either. So, the exams start today, how far did you get in your training Naruto? Sakura asked. The team was meeting for breakfast before they headed towards the academy for the first part of the exams. I was able to apply storage seals to my wrists for shuriken and kunai. I also succeeded in increasing the potency of my handheld fuinjutsu. 
Haven't made any progress in my dojutsu research though. You guys, Kakashi just worked on our taijutsu and ninjutsu potency. Sasuke picked up a new jutsu though. Sakura responded, HN. Sasuke grunted. Let's just get to the exams, the sooner this is over the sooner we are promoted. With nods the team set off for the first exam. As the team passed the second floor on their way to the third, they noticed a large group of Jinan arguing with two others in front of a door labeled 301. A genjutsu, well I guess if they can't pick up on that they don't belong in the exams, Naruto mumbled. Let's get into the room and keep a low profile, scout out the competition. Entering the real 301, Team 7 noticed they were only the second team to arrive. Taking up a position against the wall Naruto evaluated the other team with his peripherals. A boy with a device on his back and a black bodysuit, a girl with a large fan, and a red-headed boy with a red jumpsuit and a gourd on his back. Their headbands indicate Suna, but what is this weird vibe I'm getting from the redhead? It feels familiar but foreign at the same time. Hey Kurama, do you recognize this aura? I, it is the aura of bloodlust from the Ichibi, Shukaku. That boy must be his Jinchuriki. The bloodlust leaking from him must mean his seal is weak or damaged, allowing Shukaku to manipulate him. Be careful when dealing with him kid. Thanks Kurama. I'll keep that in mind. Oi, that team over there, the redhead as soon as Jinchuriki. We should steer clear of them. Naruto warned his team. It seems that the other Konoharuki Jinan teams are also here. At least we know some of our competition. His teammates nodded, avoiding a Jinchuriki was in their best interests. Glancing back at the entrance, Naruto watched as Team 10 approached them. I hope Hino doesn't do something stupid and announce us to everyone. Hey Sasuke-kun, I'm glad you decided to take the exams, she shouted. Nope, I should have known she wouldn't use her head. For the Yamanaka she sure isn't very intelligent sometimes. As all eyes in the room turned on to Team 7, a spectacled man with white hair approached Sasuke. Sasuke right? I overheard the blonde over there call your name. Since you have been revealed would you like some information on the rest of the competition? I have taken these exams seven times and I have collected information on every person taking the exams. My name is Kabuto. Hearing this, the Janan from Konoha condensed around the Chunin exam veteran. Well, who do you wish to know about? He asked the group. Rock Lee, the Suna redhead. Sasuke requested. And Naruto Uzumaki, a Hugh asked. Looking for an edge are you Neiji? It won't help you against me, Naruto announced. Now let's see if your cards ring true Kabuto. Very well. Rock Lee, Konoha Janan, age, 14, 57D, 21C. 1B Rank Mission Teammates, Neji Hyuga and 1010 Taijutsu Expert No Skills in Ninjutsu or Ganjutsu Gara of the Sand, Suna Janan Age, 13, 18D, 32C, 15B, 2 A Rank Missions Son of the Kaze Kage Aichibi Jin Shuriki Teammates, Siblings Konkuro and Tamari Utilizes Sand in his offense and defense Special Note he has returned from every mission untouched. The information on Gara was met with several gasps, and a glare from Naruto. How does he have this information? I guess we'll see what he has on me. Naruto Uzumaki, Konoha Janan, age, 13, 60D, 15C, 3B, 2 A rank missions. Spent 2.5 years in Anbu. 0 unsuccessful missions. QB Jinchuriki, teammates. Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Haruno Son of Min Naruto grabbed Kabuto by his throat and slammed him into the wall. Leaning forward to whisper in his ear he asked, Now how would you know my lineage? None other than myself and two others in this village know of it, so do tread carefully. He warned with venom in his voice. If you decide to continue your report, you will lose your head. My master has given me the information on these cards, Kabuto whispered back. Alright maggots, listen up. Everyone take a number and take your assigned seat. The exam starts now. A large man with his headband on like a bandana shouted. The exam will be one hour. There are nine questions in the first 45 minutes. After the first 45 minutes I will administer the last question. You start with 10 points. For every question you get wrong you lose a point. If one person on your team fails, the entire team fails. Get caught cheating, you fail. Clear? Begin, he bellowed. Hmm. These are all Jonin and Cage level questions. I could maybe answer one of them. So I can answer one of them and still pass with one point, or I can do as the test is intended and attempt to cheat to get the answers. I think it's about time for a nap." Naruto reasoned. He answered the first question and then put his head down. Glancing to his side he threw a wink at the quizzical Hinata before shutting his eyes. Alright scum, listen up. The 45 minutes is up. As you can see many teams have been removed for cheating. 
I will explain the rules for the next question. Before I give the question you have a choice. Leave now, and fail. Retake the exams next year. If you stay, and get the question wrong, you and your team will be banned from taking the tuning exams forever. You will remain a Janan for the rest of your pitiful lives. Take this opportunity to leave now. The proctor announced, you can't do that to us. This guy has taken the exam seven times. As soon as Janan shouted, well you lot are unlucky, because I am the proctor for this exam and I make the rules. Now decide. Your future depends on your decision. Maybe next year you will get lucky and I won't be the proctor. He rebutted. Slowly teams started to disperse. After 10 minutes of waiting it seemed that no one else would leave. Is there no one else? No? Very well. Congratulations, you all passed the exam. The proctor announced. What? What is the question? What the fuck? The same soon as Janan yelled. To stay without the essential information or to abandon your mission? That was the question. Information is a powerful thing, the proctor said as he removed his headband. His head was riddled with scars, the remnants of extensive torture. You may find yourself in enemy hands. It will be imperative to your mission and your village that you do not break. Some villages, like Iwa, have more extreme methods of extraction. Before he could continue, the windows shattered and a smoke bomb went off. As the smoke cleared a banner could be seen hanging from the ceiling. Standing in front of the banner is a woman with purple hair, a mesh shirt, orange skirt and a tan trench coat. My name is Onko, and I'm your proctor for the second exam. You've got 10 minutes to meet me at training ground 44. Let's go. With that she leapt out the window and took off. Veiled, I guess that is our K, Naruto mumbled before he shunshined away. All right here is how this works. Beyond this gate is training ground 44, also known as the forest of death. It is named appropriately. Everything from wildlife to fauna cannon will try to kill you. Each team will get a scroll. There are two scrolls. Collect both scrolls and get to the tower at the center of the forest. You have five days to accomplish this task by any means necessary. Lose a teammate and you are disqualified. Sign these forms to receive your scroll, Anko shouted to the gathered Janan. What is our game plan Naruto? Sakura asked. Sasuke turned to the redhead as well, waiting for the answer. I think we need to avoid Gara's team at all costs. We should target one of the weaker teams, maybe the Ono team and take their scroll. If we can make it to the tower quickly we can pick off the teams that arrive and take the scrolls we need. Sound good? Naruto suggested. With nods the team steeled themselves for the next task. As the gates opened, Team 7 entered with their heaven scroll. Let's beeline for the tower and set up a kilometer off. We'll set up camp and traps and wait for passing teams. Naruto instructed. With that, they headed for the middle of the forest. We've been here for two days now and haven't seen anyone yet, this forest really wasn't over-exaggerated, Sasuke said. He was currently henched into a bush beside Naruto who had henched himself into the trunk of a tree. It isn't to be underestimated. I do however sense three presences heading our way. If we're lucky they will trip my traps. Naruto replied. Give Sakura the heads up. Sasuke let a low whistle out, giving Sakura the signal that enemies were approaching. Well what do we have here? Where's your team girly? A raspy voice asked. Turning around Sakura found herself looking at three Amainin all clothed in tan jumpsuits with stitching across the front. They all wore respirators over their mouths. It seems we stumbled upon a lost Konohanin. Let's see if she has the scroll we need, and if not I'm sure one more body won't make a difference to this forest. As the first Amainin leapt towards Sakura, he stepped on a patch of grass and froze. W what is this? I can't move, he shouted. What did you do girl? She didn't do anything, fire style, great fireball jutsu, Sasuke shouted as he leapt from his hiding spot. Immobilized, the Amainian was caught in a blast. As the lead Amainian was being bathed in fire, his two companions dodged to the sides of the forest. Sakura met the one head on as Sasuke engaged the second. Sasuke slowly started pushing the Amainian backwards. He took notice of the man's cloth covering his right eye. Feigning a punch with his right hand, Sasuke kicked his opponent in the right flank with his left foot as he attempted to block the punch. Grunting and sliding back. The Amainin hit a tree as he came to a stop, bringing his guard up for the next assault. He was shocked when he couldn't move a muscle. Go help Sakura, I've got this guy locked down. Naruto spoke as he removed himself from the back of the tree. He had his hand on the Amainin's back with an incapacitation matrix spreading over his enemy's body. Now let's see if you have the scroll I need, eh? Naruto searched the man as Sasuke came to Sakura's rescue. She was holding her own but was slowly being pushed back. Tossing some shuriken to allow her a moment to disengage, Sasuke landed in between them. Oi, I've got the earth scroll. Let's get out of here. 
Their teammate is dead anyways so they are disqualified, Naruto shouted to his two teammates. Sasuke threw down a smoke bomb to cover his and Sakura's exit. As they grouped up in the canopy they headed towards the tower. We've got roughly a kilometer to go, let's get out of this damn forest with haste, Sakura said. I, good riddance, Naruto agreed. Congratulations on completing the second exam. I am Hayate Gekko and I will be the proctor for the third exam. Before we get to the third exam however, we have to whittle down the competition. Too many people have made it to this stage, so we will be having preliminary battles. If you wish to leave, now is your chance. You are no longer on a team and will be fighting only for yourself for the remainder of the exams. Hayate announced to the gathered Janan. Well, that is about it for me, Kabuto said, walking out of the arena. Anyone else? No? Alright, if you see your name on the board, appear in the arena. Everyone else up to the stands. The board rolled through the names before stopping. Sasuke Uchiha vs Tosuke Nuda. Good luck Sasuke, Sakura said. Naruto simply gave him a light punch on the shoulder before they jumped to the viewing area. This should be easy for Sasuke, but that device on his arm is peculiar, Naruto said as he leaned back against the wall. MHM, I don't know what it is for either, Kakashi replied. Alright, you both know the rules, the match goes until someone is unconscious, forfeits, dead, or I stop the match. Do try not to kill each other. Understood? Begin, Hayate said jumping back as he did so. Immediately Sasuke took up a defensive stance, watching his opponent. He doesn't look special but I should be cautious of that bracer he has. I'll let him make the first move. Sasuke reasoned. Well if you won't start I guess I will, Dosu yelled, dashing towards Sasuke. He responded by tossing a wave of shuriken at the advancing enemy while jumping backwards. Dosu deftly avoided the shuriken and got within striking range. Sasuke brought his arm up to block the punch. Just after blocking Sasuke's head started swirling. What is this? I blocked his strike so why am I so dizzy all of a sudden? Is it that thing on his arm? Dosa spun out of the block and threw his foot into Sasuke's stomach, putting him on his back. You must be wondering why you are feeling nauseous, that would be due to my little device here. I can control the sound waves emitted from it, and use it to assault your ears and put you off balance, he explained. Thanks for the explanation, but it will be your downfall. Fire style, great fireball jutsu. Sasuke yelled out, shooting flames from his mouth. Dosu used sound waves to disrupt the fire. From the flames came eight shuriken, five of which struck true. Dashing forward, Sasuke drove a kunai into Dosu's stomach. As Dosu leaned forward onto Sasuke's shoulder he whispered in his ear, the snake grows restless. One month and it will strike. Dosu is unable to continue, Sasuke is the winner. Medics, Hayate yelled. Sasuke looked down at Dosu and nodded before heading towards the viewing area. The board rolled through the names again. Shino Aburami vs Yoroi Akedo. Shino is the winner. Medics. Hayate announced. Misumi Tsurugi vs Konkuro. Konkuro is the winner. Medics. Sakura Haruno vs Ino Yamanaka. Double knockout. Neither advance. Medics. Ten Ten vs Tamari. Tamari wins. Medics. Shikamaru Nara vs Kintsuchi. Shikamaru wins. Naruto Uzumaki vs Kiba Inuzuka. Naruto smirked and shunshined to the arena. As Kiba leapt down he fixed a feral grin on Naruto. You know Uzumaki, I've got something to prove to you. I don't think you're any good for Hinata. And when I beat you, it will show her that I am right. That I can protect her better than you can. Kiba snarled as he got down on all fours next to Akamaru. You see Kiba, the reason you're not able to protect Hinata is because you think I'm protecting her. I should make it very clear. She is protecting me, not the other way around. And on top of that, she is protecting all of you from me, Naruto rebutted. As he finished his sentence his dojutsu flared. Man beast clone, fang over fang, Kiba shouted. Naruto fired shuriken from his wrist seals, only to have them deflected. Hmm I guess he is a bit resilient as he spins, I'll just have to dodge. Naruto reasoned as he jumped to his left. Landing on his hands, he applied two incapacitation seals before pushing up to dodge Akamaru's charge. While he landed on his feet, he prepped two more incapacitation seals and held his hands out towards the charging Kiba. As Akamaru hit the ground where Naruto had just been he froze from his spin, having activated the trap. His companion getting immobilized caught Kiba off guard and he came out of his spiral out of control. Naruto flashed into Kiba's path and slammed his hands into Kiba's chest. Fear flared in Kiba's eyes as he locked onto Naruto's gaze. Kiba suddenly felt very small under the eerie eyes of his biggest competition. Hinata watched on from the stands, with her hands at her chest. 
When Naruto caught Kiba she let a smile grace her worried features, however when she seen the predatory smirk cross Naruto's face she let out a gasp. That isn't his usual playful smirk. I hope he doesn't drive Kiba insane. Naruto stared into Kiba's eyes with his feral smirk, and Kiba felt his blood run cold. He watched as Naruto's tomoe around his slit pupil swirled, fearing what would happen next. Slowly, he watched as Naruto's form morphed. His arms turned dark red and grew a spike from his elbow. His hair turned gray and grew down to his waist. He grew two incisors that came out of his mouth. His face turned the same color as his arms, and wings sprouted from his back. Now let me show you why you should be afraid Kiba. Naruto drawled out. As he spoke, Kiba grew mortified as a pitch black spider crawled out of his mouth. It slowly made its way across Naruto's arm. It would stop and seem to probe its surroundings with its front legs, seemingly searching for something. As it neared Kiba it began to move faster and with more focus. It crawled up onto his face and prepared to crawl into his mouth. As it started to make its way into his mouth, everything faded with a shout. Naruto! Enough! Hinata yelled. Naruto paused and glanced up. As he made eye contact, his eyes faded. He dropped his grip on Kiba's throat as the illusion broke. Looking down on his opponent, Naruto kneeled in front of him and whispered, Like I said, she is protecting you. Kiba passed out right after. Naruto wins. Medics, Hayate yelled. Naruto walked up the stairs and stopped by Hinata. Thank you, Hinata, and I'm sorry. I got carried away. Hinata Hyuga vs Neji Hyuga. And Hinata, before you go, good luck. Naruto spoke. She smiled back at him before jumping into the arena. You should forfeit, you cannot defy fate, Neji spoke. I will not back down, I've got people who believe in me. She replied before taking her stance. I will change the ways of our clan. You can't change fate Hinata-sama, Neji spat with venom. He lunged at her, and began his deadly chakra-fueled strikes. Their battle raged on, and it appeared that neither had the advantage. The strikes were fluid, precise, almost like a dance. Neji was slowing pushing Hinata back. He was landing about one quarter of his strikes, and her about one fifth. She isn't hitting hard enough. This is going to end soon, Naruto mumbled. What do you mean? Sakura asked. The Hyuga have a special style of combat. They utilize their Byakugan to see the chakra points and then use precise chakra filled strikes to hit these points, thereby disabling them. However, Hinata isn't hitting hard enough to do the required damage to Neji's chakra points. Hers are being closed but his aren't. This fight will end soon. Neji leaned forward and threw a strike into Hinata's chest. As she landed on her back, he said give up, you can't fight fate. You are destined to lose this fight. She struggled to her feet. Lay up she fell over again and coughed up blood. No, I can't lose here. Proctor, call the fight, her chakra points are closed. She can't continue, Neji demanded. No. I can continue. I must continue. I have to prove that I can walk by his side, she shouted. The conviction in her eyes was overwhelming. Very well, 8 trigrams, 2 bombs, 4 bombs, 8 bombs, 16 bombs, 32 bombs, 64 bombs. As Neji went to finish his final strike on her chest, his hand was caught. Naruto held a firm grip on his arm, and was glaring daggers into Neji's eyes. She is unconscious, and if you hit her with that strike she would die. Medics, Naruto yelled. As the medics came in and attended to Hinata, Naruto turned on Neji again. For your sake. She had better live. Like I told Kiba, she is the person keeping you safe. If she dies, I will crucify you and spit in the face of your pitiful destiny. Naruto snarled. With that, he disappeared, on his way to the hospital to be beside Hinata. Gara vs Rock Lee, Gara is the winner. Medics, Hayate shouted. Zaku Ibumi vs Choji Akimichi, Zaku wins. All right winners gather around. Please take a number, it corresponds to your opponents in the finals. Hayate commanded as Onko handed out slips of paper. I'll take one for Naruto, Kakashi said. I'm also forfeiting my fight in the finals, Zaku said, throwing his paper back into the pot. The matches will be as you see on the board, and will be held in one month's time to allow proper preparations for hosting our guests, Hiruzen said. Looking at the board, Sasuke smiled. Looks like he will get the match he wanted. Naruto Uzumaki vs Neji Hyudga. Shikamaru Nara vs Tamari. Shino Aburami vs Konkuro. Sasuke Uchiha vs Skara. You have one month, train hard, and show up at your best. Good luck, Hiruzen said before vanishing in a swirl of leaves. Kakashi leaned over to Kurunai and whispered so, Do you want to go calm Naruto down or should I? Kurunai just disappeared in a swirl of leaves, giving Kakashi his answer. He I smiled before walking back to Sasuke. Well, 
Let's get training shall we, I've got a technique to show you. In Konoha General Hospital, Naruto is sitting hunched over with his head on the bed. Lying in the bed, being kept company by the redhead is Hinata, still unconscious from her fight with Neji. A knock sounds on the door, but the sleeping redhead doesn't acknowledge it. Slowly opening the door, the Hokage slips in with a second man. The second man has long, white hair, a horned headband on his forehead and a giant scroll on his lower back. This the kid sensei? And he's been here for the past three days? The second man asked. Yes Jiraiya, this is Naruto Uzumaki, your godson. He has been out for the past few hours so we can simply wait until he wakes up, although I doubt you will be able to get him to leave this room until she wakes up, Hiruzen replied, taking a seat by the door. Hokage Gigi? Why are you here? Naruto groggily asked, wiping his eyes of excess hardened mucus. With a groan he stretched his muscles and stood. Yawning, he looked back at the room's newest occupants. You know Naruto, it's not healthy for you to be ignoring your meals and proper sleep like this. You should be training for your finals match, Hiruzen replied. Naruto just fixed a glare on the Hokage, expressing his thoughts on leaving the room. Who is our other guest? He changed the subject. Ah, this is Jiraiya, the Frog Sage. He is one of my students, and was your father's sensei. He is your godfather. Naruto's gave the man a puzzled look. Why haven't I met him before? I can answer that, kid. I run a very large spy network across the world. It takes a lot of effort and travel to keep it operational, Jiraiya chimed in. Okay, so why have you come back then? Naruto asked. If his spy network is as vast as it is, I can only imagine the importance it has for Konoha, so he wouldn't return without a good reason. You know, I didn't expect you to be so inquisitive about this situation. Honestly I expected quite a bit of anger at me not being around to help raise you, Jiraiya confessed. Yeah well as you can see, I ended up just fine. Learned to take care of myself at an early age, skipped the academy for Anbu. Can't really live a normal life when you're in the situation I am. So don't sweat it. What I want to know is why you came back now, Naruto asked again, shrugging at his childhood before growing serious again. Geez, Minato isn't going to forgive me for this one is he? Well. I have returned bearing grave news about a rather nefarious group. It concerns you, which is why I am here, Jiraiya conceded. He isn't anything like I thought he would be. He has Kushina's looks, but Minato's mind. I expected it to be opposite honestly. This may be to my advantage though. He has Anbu training and a skilled mind. Sensei says he is good at Genjutsu and Fuinjutsu also. If I train him I'm sure he would surpass all of my expectations. Can the news wait a few days? I'm a bit overloaded with stuff at the moment. Naruto stated. He turned to Hinata and began fussing over her, fixing her sheets and tucking her in so she would be comfortable. He took her glass of water and emptied it, replacing it with a fresh glass. It can wait, but your training can't. I am taking over for Kakashi to train you for the month until the finals. So quit fussing over your girlfriend and let's go, Jiraiya commanded. Like I said, I am preoccupied at the moment and as such I won't be leaving yet. Besides, I've been doing some training of sorts anyways. Naruto trailed off. I just met him, I shouldn't tell him much about what I've been working on. He might not approve. Do tell, how have you been training when you aren't even eating or sleeping properly? Hiruzen asked, deciding to join the conversation. I don't think I should disclose sensitive information to someone I don't know Hokage Gigi. Jiraiya knows everything already. You can trust him, he will be your sensei after all, Hiruzen replied. Very well. I've been testing a specific Fuinjutsu matrix in my mindscape. Once I have the basis down I will then experiment with adding timers to it, like I have done with my explosion and incapacitation matrixes. Kurama is helping me. I trust this won't leave this room? Naruto explained, of course, but if I may ask, what kind of matrix are you working on? I am rather adept with sealing. I'm no Uzumaki, but I'm one of the best that there is left in this world. Maybe I can lend a hand? Jiraiya asked. Also, who is Kurama? I thought you hadn't left this room in the past three days? Fuinjutsu experimentation in his mindscape? At such a young age too, this kid really does have Minato's brains. He thought, I am trying to make a matrix I can apply to my allies, specifically Hinata, that will render my dojutsu ineffective against them. I'm sure Hokage Gigi has briefed you on my dojutsu. The issue is that the seal also has to be able to work when I have Kurama's chakra active. Kurama is the QB by the way. When I use his chakra, it allows me to utilize my genjutsu as more area of effect illusions instead of only being able to cast them on people I make eye contact with. If I can create a seal that will allow my allies to be emitted from this area of effect, 
It would allow me greater freedom when fighting in groups. My biggest worry is that the seal will have to have some of Kurama's chakra in it, but that can be deadly to most people. I haven't found a way to contain his chakra in the seal without corrupting the host yet. Naruto trailed off. Hiruzen and Jiraiya had their mouths on the floor. This kid. Just how smart is he? The level of comprehension for few in Jutsu required to be able to notice all of the potential issues with the kind of seal he is thinking of is that of a seasoned master few in Jutsu user. Maybe I can't teach him anything. I will just have to offer my experience. Jiraiya thought. Snapping himself out of his state of shock, Jiraiya coughed before replying, Can I see the seal you have so far? Maybe a second I could spot something you have been missing. As far as recognizing the potential problems however, I think you've anticipated them all. Yeah I'll draw it up for you. Hold on, Naruto unsealed a scroll and ink. This will take me a bit, he warned before getting to work. Fifteen minutes in, Jiraiya noticed a curious look on Naruto's face. Did he just discover a potential issue? It's like he hasn't written it before, wait no, it couldn't be. Have you ever written this seal out before? Jiraiya asked. No, I usually use hand seals, and in my mindscape I can create much more complicated seals than I can outside of it. So I've just been using shadow clones to create the seal I imagined over and over again, and then changing the issues I found. Naruto responded, earning another gaping look from the room's occupants. What, you know that not even most few Jutsu masters are capable of doing stuff like that right? That's amazing, Jiraiya shouted. Oi, not so loud. And I know I'm not a normal few Jutsu user. It just seems to come natural to me. But more importantly, I think I discovered my issue with containing Kurama's chakra. Here what do you think of this? Naruto asked, showing Jiraiya his scroll. Hmm, well this to that, and that cycles properly, but what is this blank area for? It should be where you indicators for the dojutsu are for. Jiraiya asked. I, it's blank because I don't know what my dojutsu is. Nor does anyone I have encountered yet. When I find out what it is, I can complete the seal. Well, show me your dojutsu, and maybe I will recognize it, Jiraiya requested. Naruto silently obliged and activated his eyes. Staring back at Jiraiya are two yellow orbs, with a black slit for a pupil and four tomoe around the pupils. Rising out of the boy's back were two wings seemingly made of bone. They flapped a couple times before disappearing, so, recognize it? I just showed you the abilities I have discovered and what it looks like. Naruto asked. So, it can cast genjutsu and it looks like that. I've heard of something like that once before in my travels but I will have to get word out to my informants across the sea to confirm. I believe it comes from over there, Jiraiya responded. I'll get word out and then return. Once I do get back later today we'll start your training. Like I said, I am Naruto started but was cut off with a wave of the man's hand. I know what you said. See you later kid. And with that, Hiruzen and Jiraiya left the hospital room. Naruto sighed and sat back down. Naruto-kun? W where am I? A soft voice asked. His eyes went wide and he whirled towards the bed. Hinata? How are you feeling? You've been getting quite a lot of beauty sleep lately, Naruto asked, reaching over and squeezing her hand. She smiled at the gesture. I'm just sore as all, I don't feel any permanent damage to my chakra points, she answered. Now tell me why you look like Kel Naruto-kun. You better not have been neglecting your health to sit here and mope. She fixed a stern glare on her face, but her eyes sparkled in silent gratefulness. The guilty downward glance of Naruto gave Hinata her answer. Baka, she whispered, flicking them on the forehead. You should be training for your match in a month, not doting over me. I'm not too worried. I'm confident I can beat Neji, and your well-being is more important than some exam anyways, he shrugged, giving her his infamous smirk. Why you face Neji-san? Are you going to kill him? She asked, her voice hesitant. When he didn't respond she spoke again, I don't want you to kill him Naruto-kun. I know you are going to teach him a lesson, but don't kill him okay? He can still change his path. Naruto didn't reply, but simply looked away and nodded. I'm serious Naruto. I don't want you to have blood on your hands because of me, she admonished. Look at me, do you understand? I am fine. He didn't kill me, so don't kill him. Save him instead, for me. Please, I, alright. You win Hina-chan, Naruto relented. He placed his head in her lap and gave her hand a squeeze. I always do Naru-kun. Now go, go get Jiraiya-sama and train. I'll keep your cave warm for when you return in a month, he not ordered, giving Naruto a wry smile when he cast his questioning glance at her. She winked and waved him out of the room. Boys, so stubborn. I want to thank everyone for making the journey to Konoha for the final part of the Chunin exams, Hiruzen bellowed to the arena.
We even have a couple cages in our midst. I hope you finalists will give this tournament your all. The pride of your village is in your hands. Now without further delay, let us begin the first match. In the stadium, a man steps forward. I am Ganma, and I will be the proctor of this tournament. The fight will end when one is unable to fight, forfeits, or I stop the fight. Understood? Receiving nods, he continued, good. First match is Naruto Uzumaki vs Neji Hyudga. Everyone else move to the observation room. Are both of you ready? Begin, Genma said, jumping out of the way. He could feel the tension in the air. So you have decided to fight fate. The outcome of this match has already been decided. Your resistance is futile. Neji spoke, taking his Juken stance and activating his Byakugan. Naruto smirked before activating his Dojutsu. Whose eyes do you think are better? His Tomoe spun rapidly, and he prepped his hand seals. Shadow Clone Jutsu. Twenty clones spread out around Neji, some using their Shuriken seals on their wrists to launch a ranged assault. He's forcing me to this already. Rotation. Neji rotated in a tight circle, propelling chakra from his hands creating a dome around him. The incoming Shuriken bounced off the dome. The clones landed just outside of the range of the dome, placing incapacitation seals on the ground. Ten clones prepared explosion seals and leapt at the chakra dome around Neji, hitting it at the same time. A massive explosion went off, the resulting smoke covering the impact area. Dashing out of the smoke came Neji, with quick and precise strikes he dispelled all of Naruto's clones. The explosion had disabled the incapacitation seals and left Neji a clear path forwards. Taking advantage of the opening Neji closed the gap between himself and his enemy. As Naruto watched Neji close in, he prepped incapacitation seals on his hands and smirked. Like herding sheep? He thought. His Domoe flared again as he defended the chakra-filled strikes. Naruto took care to minimize the damage of blocking by manipulating his chakra flow. He couldn't cut it off completely, but he could reduce the flow to his limbs momentarily to avoid losing function of the limb. You're in range of my divination, 8 trigrams, 2 bombs, 4 bombs, 8 bombs, 16 bombs, 32 bombs, 64 bombs. Neji finished his barrage of strikes with a strike to Naruto's chest. As he fell backwards, Neji spit out. I told you that fate had decided my victory already. It was foolish to fight me. Turning on his heel, Neji was shocked when a hand wrapped around his ankle. Looking down he seen a skeletal hand holding him still. A second skeletal hand gripped his knee, and the hands began pulling themselves up his torso. Whirling around, Neji gaped at the sight of his opponent. Naruto was gripping Neji's legs, looking up at him with a feral grin and half his face missing, showing his skull. W what the hell? What are you? Neji screamed out. He watched as the flesh on Naruto's bones corroded and melted into nothingness. Rising to his feet, the skeletal Naruto lifted Neji up by his neck and squeezed, cutting off the majority of his air supply. You had no chance of winning the moment you stepped into this arena Neji. Your fate is nothing but a joke. Wake up and see what's around you, Naruto spoke. Suddenly Neji's vision shattered, and the pieces fell like glass to reveal the reality of things. Being held up by the throat by Naruto, his entire body was covered in a ceiling matrix. Looking into his opponent's face, he observed the smug smirk on Naruto's face. Now that you've joined us in the realm of reality, let me test a new seal on you. It's particularly nasty, but I'm sure it will give you an idea about what your own techniques do to people, Naruto explained. He formed a seal on the tips of his fingers and smiled wickedly. Thrusting his hand into Neji's stomach, he dropped him on the ground. Neji writhed in pain on the ground, looking down with his Byakugan he could see chakra leaking from every chakra point in his body. To the average observer Neji was bleeding profusely from many points on his body. Slowly Neji's movements began to slow, before he stilled. Having fallen unconscious, Naruto prepared his seal to stop the hemorrhaging few in Jutsu. Neji Hyuga is unable to continue, Naruto Uzumaki wins, Genma shouted. The crowd was deathly silent as Naruto leaned towards Genma. He needs medical attention immediately or he will die, Naruto warned. Genma nodded in motion for the medics to make haste. The bleeding had stopped but the loss of blood and chakra was severe. In the crowd, many who knew Naruto were lost in thought recalling the battle. Jiraiya in particular was quite shocked about the battle. To everyone but Neji the match was over quickly. Neji had performed a seemingly random defensive rotation before rushing at Naruto, being lifted by his neck and having seals placed on him. It was over in five minutes. Jiraiya shivered at the power of Naruto's genjutsu. The silent crowd was justified by how fearful this display was. The horrified screams of Neji alone would strike fear into one unknowing of the redhead's abilities. In the honored guest's booth, the Kaze Kage was deep in thought as well. I'm going to have to move the invasion up. 
It didn't look like the boy used much of his reserves, but any bit under 100% is better than having him at 100%. I'll give word for Gar to unleash his wrath during his match. Hopefully the next two end as quickly as this fight. I'll give word for Konkura to forfeit as well. Tamari won't even if I order her to, so no point in asking her. Next match is Shikamaru Nara vs Tamari Genma announced. Tamari is the victor by forfeit. I have also received word that Konkuro has forfeited the next match against Shino Aburame, making him the winner. The next match will therefore be Sasuke Uchiha vs Gara. Competitors please enter the stadium. Genma announced to the arena. Gara and Sasuke appeared in the arena in a flash of sand and leaves respectively. Gara fixed Sasuke with a bloodthirsty glare as sand circled his body, almost resembling a snake waiting to strike. You both know the rules. Begin. Genma shouted, leaping back out of the way. Gara grinned widely while waiting for his opponent to strike. Mother wants your blood, he shouted, raising his hand and firing sand at Sasuke. Sasuke took evasive action, dodging the sand while making his way closer to his opponent. Activating his Sharingan he made some hand signs while running. Fire style, great fireball jutsu, he shouted, launching a massive fireball at Gara. Sand flared up and encased Gara, protecting him, however it seemed the fire was hot enough to turn the sand to glass. Sasuke slid to a stop and started channeling chakra. He engulfed his arm in lightning chakra, and chippering could be heard throughout the arena. Chidori, he shouted before continuing his charge at Gara. He reached Gara and plunged his Chidori into the glass encasement surrounding him. The lightning carved through the glass, and with Sasuke holding his hand in the hole, everything went quiet. Suddenly a murmur could be heard from the sand, blood, 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 my blood. Is that my blood? You made me bleed my own blood. No one makes me bleed my own blood. The scream was deafening, and promptly after the sand exploded outwards. Sasuke retreated to the edge of the arena. This isn't good. I knew he was unstable but this is another level. Tamari, we need to grab him and move now, Konkuro shouted. Both of the siblings vaulted into the arena and smoke screen from the explosion. After a tense moment Tamari cleared the smoke with her fan to reveal Konkuro holding Gara with his puppet. Let's move. We need to vacate the area. It's beginning. As the Suna siblings leapt from the arena, a massive crash sounded from the western outskirts of Konoha. Three giant snakes made their way through the wrecked wall. Hokage-sama, we are under attack from Adonin and Sunanin. Ananbu reported, appearing in the cage box. What is the meaning of this Kaze-kage? Hiruzen demanded. Standing, the Kaze-kage dropped his robes, revealing himself to be the Hokage student. Orochimaru, I should have known, Hiruzen scowled. Very well. You leave me no choice. I will finish here what I started years ago. Caught in the chaos, Naruto was frantically searching for Jiraiya or Kakashi to get the gist of the situation. Spotting the white hair of his sensei and old partner, he dashed towards him. Kakashi sensei, what is going on? And what are my orders? Otto and Suna are invading. Orochimaru has engaged the Hokage. You are to assemble a small strike team and go after the Suna Jin Churiki. He is highly unstable and must be contained. Any and all methods are authorized, Kakashi ordered. With a nod Naruto disappeared. I've got to find at least two more people to form this strike team. Hinata for tracking would be good, Shikamaru for tactical. Speak of the devil. Shikamaru. We are under attack from Ado and Suna, I need you with me. We need to find Hinata and one other person for a pursuit and subdual of the Sunajin Chiriki, Naruto said. Gotcha, Hinata was just over there with Shino and Kiba. Let's grab them. Shikamaru replied. Naruto nodded and took off. Hinata, Kiba, Shino. I need you three with me and Shikamaru. We are to pursue and subdue the Sunaji and Chiriki. Do you understand the mission? Naruto asked upon finding teammate. Shino and Hinata nodded, but Kiba opened his mouth. Wait, what is going on? We are under attack from Suna and Otto. The Sunaji and Chiriki was taken by his siblings and we are to pursue them and subdue the Jin Chiriki, preferably before he loses control completely. You three are the best tracking team we've got. Let's go, we are wasting daylight. Naruto confirmed for Kiba. With that the impromptu group was off, chasing after their prey. Spread out in arrowhead formation. Kiba on the left, Shino on the right, Hinata at the front, Shikamaru in the middle and myself at the rear. Move as fast as possible, Naruto barked, receiving nods and silent compliance. The team had been traveling for 45 minutes before Kiba spoke up, I smell their trail, Hinata. Shino, do you guys have anything? I can't see anything. Shino? Hinata answered. My bugs have found them, four kilometers ahead. We will meet them in 20 minutes at our current pace. Plan for engaging? 
Shino replied, Naruto looked at Shikamaru who took the K, it would be in our best interest to have Naruto confront Gara. Myself and Hinata will take Tamari while Shino and Kiba deal with Konkuro. Naruto, if you can get Gara under a Genjutsu that can save us a lot of trouble. I don't want him losing control completely. We should also try and separate Gara from his siblings. Questions? Shikamaru explained. Also, Naruto you should use as many layers as possible and utilize as much of Kurama as possible right off the bat. I don't want to take any chances, understood? Shikamaru asked. A nod from Naruto had them refocusing on their approaching target. The target is just up ahead, get ready, Hinata said. Konkuro's puppet has Gara. Take the puppet out first. Kiba it is your job to separate Gara from the puppet. Shikamaru ordered. Man beast clone. Fang over Fang, Kiba shouted, barreling in towards the puppet. Caught by surprise, the puppet dropped Gara. Shino swarmed Konkuro with his insects as he nodded dove at Tamari. Shikamaru landed at the edge of the small clearing and prepared his shadows. Naruto took this opportunity and prepared his incapacitation few in jutsu. Rifling towards Gara, he activated his dojutsu and drove his hands into Gara's chest, spreading a ceiling matrix across the Sunajin Churiki. Naruto tossed Gara over his shoulder and took off further into the forest, leaving his comrades to deal with the other two Sunanin. Coming to a clearing, Naruto placed Gara against a tree and tied him up. I can't imagine this is going to hold him, I can feel the malice coming from him, Naruto mumbled to himself. Kit. You should reinforce your seals and start layering genjutsu on him, I can feel Chukaku's chakra swelling inside him. If he breaks loose, the only way to beat him is for me to take over, and I don't think you can bring yourself back after that yet. Kurama spoke in Naruto's mind. Alright Kurama, let's go to Fort Dales, and I'll layer as much as I can Naruto responded. He activated his dojutsu and starting pumping Kurama's chakra outwards. A blood-red chakra cloak formed around him, bubbling with energy. Slowly a tail grew from the cloak as Naruto's features grew more feral. His incisors grew and stuck out of his mouth, his fingernails elongated and came to a sharp point half an inch past his fingertips. The tail split into four tails, swaying to and fro behind the boy. Naruto dropped to all fours, and fixed his gaze on Gara. We have to keep him awake, but subdued. If he goes unconscious then Shukaku will be released. Kurama warned. Naruto nodded as his tomoe flared. Gara's eyes widened as a serene setting encompassed him. A soft smile crossed his face. This. Is. Nice, he mumbled. It's been so long since I've slept, maybe. Just a. Little. Nap. Fuck, Hess going to fall asleep. Gotta change the settings, but what could keep him calm, maybe a slaughter. Naruto panicked before slowly layering yet another illusion into the jutsu. As Gara was about to nod off, he heard the familiar sounds of battle. In the distance the ringing of kunai and shuriken could be heard. Blood, mother wants blood. The boy screeched before launching himself towards the chaos. He reveled in the madness of battle. A vicious smile adorned Gara's face as he slaughtered the endless onslaught of foes. This feels, amazing, he yelled. Does this please you mother? His relentless attacks continued on the sea of ninja charging down towards the gully he found himself in. More? You want more, mother? Take as much as you want mother. With that final yell, Naruto could feel a disturbance. Time slowed as Gara fell upon the ground, suddenly unconscious. Fuck. What happened? Kurama we've got a problem. I can feel the Ichibi coming. Naruto trailed off as a massive explosion of sand occurred at the center of the gully Gara had fallen in. The illusions all cracked and shattered, leaving a grossly disfigured Gara where the boy and tree originally were. He had a massive tail of sand extending from his back with blue lines covering it. His right arm was encased in a large claw of sand that touched the ground when he stood straight. Kurama, what options do we have here? Can I deal with this with four tails? Naruto asked. The boy is still conscious, but he is rampaging. If you can drain him but avoid knocking him out we should be okay. Naruto nodded, and prepped his seals. Dojutsu would no longer work on the Sunajin Shuriki as he was in a blind rage. His only option was his new seal. This is going to be dangerous. Hopefully the seal can pull through. Dashing forward, Naruto released a hail of shuriken from his wrist seal, attempting to get close enough to apply the seal. I have to avoid applying the seal to the chakra cloak, and hit him directly. He rolled to his right to avoid a piercing overhead strike from the sand tail. Using two of his chakra tails Naruto pinned the sand tail. Continuing forward he ducked under the horizontal swipe of Gar's sand claw. As the limb passed over top of him, Naruto applied his strongest explosion seal to it, hoping for a distraction. As the explosion went off, Gara screeched in pain. As he flailed around, 
Naruto seen his opening. Closing the distance, Naruto slammed his left hand into Gara's chest, knocking the boy off his feet and onto his back. He used his four chakra tails to pierce and pin the limbs of his opponent, watching as the seal spread across his body. Slowly and methodically, Gara started bleeding from his chakra points. He writhed in pain, unable to free himself from the agony. Naruto let out a sigh, the seal was working. His relief turned to horror as he heard a voice yell at the duo, Gara, Enough! The invasion is over. We lost. It was Tamari who was yelling from the edge of the clearing. Gara's eyes shot open, and his head twisted backwards at a disturbing angle. A grin appeared on his face as he mumbled one word. Blood. Gara's sand tail shot forward towards his sister. Shocked by the aggression, she froze and held her arms in front of her. The sickening sound of flesh being torn was heard, and hot blood hit Tamari's face. She opened her eyes and found herself staring into Naruto's face. He had the sand tail through the right side of his chest, and blood coming from his mouth. Gara, Subdued. Get. Hinata. I'm. Going to Loak. Lose. Control. Naruto coughed out. Tamari watched as his eyes rolled back into his skull and a malicious killing intent made itself present. Naruto fell to the ground as his blood-red chakra cloak seemed to swirl and bubble. The clearing was rising in temperature fast. Tamari's eyes grew wide when she seen a fifth tail emerge from Naruto's chakra cloak. The anger and malice in the air screamed at her instincts to run. Get anywhere from here, but she found herself frozen in her spot. She was broken from her stupor when five figures entered the clearing. What the fuck is that? Kiba shouted, pointing at the blood-red blob of chakra with six tails on the ground in front of Tamari. Tamari, get away from him. Konkuro grabbed Gara. Shino, Shikamaru, Kiba, stay out of this. He will kill you if you get too close. He not ordered. She stepped into the clearing and stood a few feet away from the chakra monstrosity on the ground. Konkuro and Tamari had grabbed Gara and retreated to the edge of the clearing with the three Konohajin on. Hinata, get back. He is going to lose control. He could kill you, Kiba shouted. Hinata rounded on Kiba and fixed him with a glare that stopped him cold. Did you forget what Naruto told you after your fight? Under no circumstances are any of you to enter this clearing, understood? One of you needs to get Jiraiya-sama as fast as possible. Hinata turned back towards Naruto and watched as the form of a boy with six tails rose from the ground. The figure's eyes were an eerie white, a stark contrast to his blood-red body. The figure took a cautious step towards Hinata and opened its mouth. It didn't say anything, but it opened and closed its mouth a few times. Hi Kurama, I need you to calm down and give me Naruto back, okay? Hinata said as she smiled at the figure. She coated her hand in her familiar blue chakra and held it out to Naruto. The figure cocked its head to the side, seemingly regarding the foreign gesture. He stood staring at the hand for 20 minutes. The whole time Hinata stood with a gentle smile on her face. The onlookers were too stunned to speak, not wanting to set the figure off. They stared silently as time seemed to stop in the clearing. A gasp escaped Tamari as the figure moved his arm, breaking the stalemate. Slowly, Naruto raised his hand and placed it in Hinata's. She closed her hand around his, and pumped more chakra into her hand. The sheer heat of Naruto's chakra cloak was quickly evaporating her own coating over her hand, needing to constantly be replaced. Hinata never dropped her smile as she continued to drain her chakra reserves. In her peripheral she sighed when she watched a frog pop up behind Shino and open its mouth, revealing Jiraiya with one of Shino's beetles on his shoulder. Fixing her attention back on Naruto, she covered herself in chakra and stepped forward. She only had five seconds before her own reserves would be depleted from this action, so she hoped it would be enough time for Jiraiya. Wrapping her arms around the boy, she squeezed him in a loving embrace. Naruto remained still, but gasped as a hand slammed into his back. Looking behind him, Naruto seen Jiraiya with his hand on his back, a seal spreading across his body. He nodded and whispered, T thank you. Before falling to the ground unconscious, Hinata caught the boy before he hit the ground, and rested his head in her lap. She ran her fingers through his hair, never moving her focus from him. Jiraiya let out the breath he had been holding, before walking up to the onlookers. Head back to Konoha. You three soon and in understand you are prisoners of war yes? Receiving a nod he looked at Shikamaru before he continued, Good, these three will escort you. Be warned, the village is not unscathed, and we lost many good ninja today. Take these three to Aviki at D&I for holding in the Anbu cells, then wait for me at the Hokage Tower. Dismissed. The trio nodded before taking up a loose formation around Tamari, Konkuro, and Gara. Looking back at Hinata and Naruto, Jirai motioned for his Dode summon to approach. Let's get you two back to his cave shall we? I've got some pressing matters to attend to. Konoha had succeeded in repelling Suna and Otto, 
but the price was steep. Orochimaru had succeeded in killing Hiruzen, at the cost of his arms. Many Konoha nin were missing, presumed dead. Sasuke had disappeared during the battle, and his body has yet to be recovered. Three days after the battle, a large funeral was held for Hiruzen, after which Jiraiya was approached by the Hokage's advisors. They informed him of their want for him to become the next Hokage because they hadn't heard back from Tsunade yet. Hiruzen had sent word for Tsunade to return and become Hokage before the finals of the Chunin exams, due to the worrying news Jiraiya's network uncovered. Jiraiya refused and instead said he would track down Tsunade. A week later Jiraiya returned with Tsunade, who was sworn in the following morning. Naruto was asleep for three weeks after his fight with Gara. When Tsunade had returned to the village she insisted he be moved from his cave to the hospital so she could monitor him. Naruto had received visits from Jiraiya, Tsunade, and a couple classmates while he was asleep. Hinata almost lived in the hospital room with him. The news of the aftermath of the invasion came as a shock to Naruto, but given his Anbu training he adapted quickly. A knock could be heard on Tsunade's door. Happy for the distraction from all of the paperwork she barked out enter. Looking up she found Naruto entering with Jiraiya behind him. Ah Naruto, what can I do for you today? She asked, folding her hands in front of her face. Afternoon Hokage-sama. As you know, one of my teammates is MIA, and as such we are crippled as a team. I wish to request my reinstatement into the Anbu on paper, with the assignment of a long-term surveillance mission with Jiraiya-sensei. Given the situation of the world right now, I believe now is a good time for me to leave and train. Naruto stated. He fixed a hardened and determined look on his face as he explained his reasoning. I see, how long will you be gone Jiraiya? And can you keep him safe from this Akatsuki you have heard rumors of? Tsunade asked, pointing her imposing stare at Jiraiya. Yes, I believe I can both vastly increase the boy's abilities as well as obtaining much needed information about this new group. We would be gone for at least two years, but more likely four. This time will prove invaluable to Naruto in preparing him for what is to come. He replied his face void of the usually playful demeanor it usually holds. Very well, when will you leave? She asked. Three days we will depart at sunrise. Jiraiya answered. With a nod and wave from Tsunade the duo left her office. Well, better go let my friends know and prepare to leave. If I survive I'll meet you at the gate, he said, disappearing in a flash. Naruto wandered through the village, his hands in his pockets. He was slowly making his way to the Anbu headquarters to retrieve his old mask. If he was going to be reinstated he might as well get his mask back. As he walked through the village, the finishing touches of reconstruction were being completed on the destroyed buildings and the wall. Naruto had been asleep for most of the construction and hadn't seen the true scope of devastation that befell the village. Reaching the Anbu HQ, he entered and was greeted by the recruitment officer. Ah Uzumaki-san, returning at last, please go ahead. Your locker is as you left it. Naruto nodded and continued to the locker room. Opening his locker. He reaching in and grabbed the only thing inside, a white mask in the shape of an owl face, with a line down the left side passing through the eye. Sighing, he sealed the mask in a storage seal on his headband and exited the building. I should probably tell Hinata that I'm leaving, and Sakura since we are teammates. I'll tell Sakura real quick before I go find Hinata Naruto thought to himself on his way through the village. Naruto made his way to the Haruno household. With a brief knock he stood outside waiting. Moments later Sakura answered the door. Hello. Hey Naruto, what's up? Please, come in, she said, beckoning him inside. I just wanted to tell you that since Sasuke is MIA and our team is sidelined because of it, I will be rejoining the Yonbu. I am leaving in three days for an extended surveillance mission and could be gone for a couple of years, Naruto said, standing in the entryway now. Oh, I see. Well thanks for telling me. I'm assuming you need to get going and tell someone else yeah? Sakura replied with a playful smirk. Naruto nodded and made his exit. Now the challenging one. Might as well get this over with as quick as possible Naruto reasoned before flashing away to the Hyuga compound. Approaching the gate, he was halted by the guards. State your business, one demanded. I am looking for Hinata-sama as I wish to speak with her. It is an urgent matter. Is she available? Naruto responded, thanking his Anbu training for being able to act professional at this compound. The Hyuga family still wasn't fond of him. No, she is currently occupied. I will let her know you wish to speak with her, the guard replied. With a nod, he left. The Hugas might not like him, but they always did perform their duties. I guess I could just go back to my cave and wait, she should be able to find me pretty quickly with her Byakugan, Naruto thought before heading towards his dwelling. On his way home he picked up some cinnamon buns, whistling to himself throughout his walk. He stopped and at a few more shops, 
collecting ingredients for a meal tonight. I wish Kerr and I were around, but with the chaos of the invasion all available Jonin are on missions right now. I probably won't see her until I return, that isn't going to be a fun conversation either. He shivered at the thought of that talk. He was pulled out of his musings as he arrived home. Putting his dinner supplies down, he set about preparing for his journey. He knew Hinata would want to cook with him, so he would take care of some other tasks while he awaited her arrival. Unsealing his mask, he set it on a bench beside his Anbu chest armor. He took his bracers off and placed them down as well. Emptying his shuriken and kunai seals into large boxes beside the bench, he began the menial task of counting his supplies. Naruto decided that his current stock of 200 shuriken and 120 kunai would be enough until he could resupply wherever they stopped. Next he set about taking measure of his few injutsu supplies. He removed 22 scrolls from his seal on his belt, and also removed 4 bottles of ink and 2 brushes. Hmm I'll have to restock my ink and scrolls. I'll do that tomorrow. Before Naruto could continue with his inventory, he looked up and found Hinata leaning against the entrance to the cave. Her face was contorted into a look of worry and fear, and her gaze was fixed on the mask on his bench. Naruto sighed as he stood up and waited for her to recompose herself. Are are you going back? She whispered. He had to strain his hearing to catch it, but he did. He didn't open his mouth, just nodded. Her gaze was still stuck on the white owl mask. With shaky steps Hinata made her way to the bench. She picked up the mask cautiously, almost as if it would reach out and bite her. Tracing her fingers over the thick black vertical line on the left side of the mask, a tear fell from her eye. This seemed to break the dam as she started sobbing quietly. Naruto took the mask from her and placed it on the bench. Turning towards her, he moved to envelope her in a hug, but was stopped when she started hitting him in the chest. He stood still and let her vent her anger at him, a frown on his face. Eventually she stopped hitting him seemingly having run out of energy. He pulled her into him and wrapped her up in a warm embrace. He didn't say anything, simply rubbing circles on her back. Her body stopped shaking some time later, and her sobbing stopped. With her tear-stained face she looked up at him and spoke, When? And how long? Three days. Approximately four years, he replied with regret evident in his voice. She nodded, and to his surprise didn't start crying again. I I see. Four years, what is so important? She asked. Stepping away from him and breaking the embrace. You know I can't answer that. I need to know that what you're doing is necessary, Naruto. The lack of an honorific shocked him. He nodded slowly before opening his mouth. Delaying the fourth great shinobi war, he said softly, looking to the side as he did. This was going to be dangerous, and he knew Hinata wouldn't like the sounds of that. Oh oh. I see. Well we can send you away on an empty stomach can we? She said moving towards the kitchen. Hina Naruto started but was cut off. I know, Naruto-kun. I know I am ignoring this, and I know that it is important and I can't stop you. So please, just spend these last couple days with me. Spend a night with me, and let me pretend okay? I want to have something to hold on to for the next four years. Her tone was pleading, and she was almost begging him to give in. Slowly he tilted his head down, giving in to her demands. Grabbing his hand, she pulled him towards the kitchen. Good. Now help me prepare dinner. He smiled. It was a small smile, but it was genuine. He would miss this, he would miss her. After dinner, Naruto and Hinata spent the evening sitting outside the cave staring up at the night sky. I've always liked the view out here. The lack of light pollution really makes the night sky shine, Hinata confessed. I, he replied with a nod. Shall we retire for the night? I am a bit drained, he asked. Hinata nodded, before standing and taking his hand, dragging him inside. She pulled him over to the bed. Sitting down on the bed, she did not relinquish her grip when Naruto moved to get his sleeping bag and put it on the floor. With a questioning glance he looked back at her. Hinata simply shook her head and pulled on his hand. Giving in, he nodded. Allowing Hinata to pull him down onto the bed, he laid down. Opening his mouth to ask a question, she put her finger over his lips. I'm going to get changed, you get ready for bed too. I know you don't like to sleep as you are. She ordered getting up and going to the bathroom. Naruto sighed before sitting up and pulling his sandals off. He changed out of his pants and into some lighter black pajama pants. Sighing he sat back down on the bed. Before he could lie down he felt two hands at the small of his back. He lifted his arms into the air as the hands pulled his shirt up and over his head. Naruto shivered as the cool hands traced his back. He felt them linger over the three long jagged scars that cut across his back diagonally from his left shoulder down towards his right hip. He felt he not arrest her head against his back before she whispered, You never told me about how you got this scar, Naru-kun. I told you I wouldn't haunt you with my time in the Anbu. 
She nodded at his response, pushing her face into the crevice between his shoulder blades. She snaked her arms around his back and up to wrap around his torso. She moved her hips so she could wrap her legs around his waist from behind as well, latching onto him like a monkey. Neither of them spoke a word as we sat in comfortable silence, enjoying the closeness of each other. After a while, Hinata untangled herself from Naruto's back and pushed him down onto the bed. He finally took notice of her choice of bedwear. She had on one of his t-shirts and a pair of tight shorts. She broke him out of his observations when she climbed on top of him, putting a leg on each side of his waist. Since she was smaller than him, she could straddle his waist and still lay her head on his chest. Snaking her arms under his shoulders and up into his hair, she put her head down on his chest and smiled. Sensing the questioning look he was giving her, she replied without looking up, I'm comfy like this. Do you have any complaints? Naruto smirked and shook his head. He brought his hands down, pulled the blanket over top of them, and put his hands on her upper thighs. Feeling emboldened by the current position, he tucked his head down and placed a kiss on the top of Hinata's head. He felt her face go red from the heat it was emitting. Good night, Hina-chan, and thank you for everything you do for me, he whispered. Hinata decided to be bold as well, and turned her head slightly to kiss his chest. She put her head back down and nuzzled into him. Sweet dreams, she whispered, and even quieter, so quiet she thought she said it in her head, she mumbled out, I love you, before closing her eyes and falling asleep. Naruto barely picked up her last statement, and squeezed her thighs in response before following her lead and going to sleep. It is around mid-morning in fire country, and two men are walking down the road an hour outside of Konoha. One man has long spiky white hair, red face paint and a scroll on his back. He wears a red howry over top of his dance shirt and pants with sandals on his feet. His partner has wild red hair that defies gravity sticking out behind his head. He has a sleeveless, long black trench coat that reaches his knees that he keeps open at the front to reveal a half-transparent mesh shirt. His arms are covered in bandaged wrappings. He has a black belt holding up camo cargo pants that are tucked into bandage wrappings, which cover from the bottom of his calf down, with shinobi sandals on his feet. Over his face is a white owl mask with a single vertical black line on the left side of the mask, cutting through the eye hole. The 6 foot 2 18 year old is walking with his hands in his pockets, whistling quietly to himself. Naruto Uzumaki and Jiraiya are finally returning to Konoha. As the gates came into view, Naruto sealed his mask away in his headband that hung around his neck. Almost five years huh, I'm gonna be in a load of shit soon. Was all that time researching really necessary Euro Senen? It probably cost us a good half a year total. Naruto drawled out. He was excited to be back, but he was regretting the ass kickings he knew were coming his way. Of course. I can't give up an opportunity for research. A man's gotta make a living somehow, Jiraiya exclaimed. The guards stopped Hiduo from entering the gates, not caring to take full notice of who it was. Name and reason for your visit please, one of the guards drawled out. Is that really necessary? I don't think four years and some change is enough for a village to forget who we are, Jiraiya said, earning a smirk from Naruto as the guards looked up. Their jaws dropped and they couldn't seem to get their vocal cords to function. I'll take that as permission to enter, Jiraiya said, walking through the gate. As Jiraiya and Naruto walked through the village, almost everyone they came across stopped what they were doing and gaped at the pair. It had been almost five years since the duo had been seen in Konoha. Word had spread of Naruto subduing the Tsunaji and Shiriki. And despite next to no one seeing the incident firsthand, many had come to regard him in a new light. He had up and disappeared a few weeks after the incident, and no one had any time to thank him. Most villagers figured he had abandoned the village. As the duo continued their trek towards the Hokage Tower, word started to spread about their return. Slowly the crowd grew larger and larger as they made their way through the village. What's with the crowd? I didn't think you had this many fans Uro Senin, Naruto asked. I don't. I think they are all looking at you boy. Word must have spread about you defeating the Sunajin Shuriki before our departure. Jirai responded, amused by the boy's perplexed look. Well this isn't the welcome I expected. Too much attention if you ask me, Naruto said, closing his eyes and starting up his whistling again. As the Hokage Tower came into view, the crowd of villagers slowly turned into fellow ninja regarding the duo. Naruto could feel the familiar chakra signatures around him but he decided to spare himself the looks on their faces. Coming up to the tower, Naruto opened his eyes and found the smirking form of Shikamaru leaning against the door. Shikamaru nodded to Naruto as he walked through the doors. The redhead tossed him a smirk and a wink, making his way towards the stairs. Well, out of the oven and into the frying pan, eh? Jiraiya jested outside of Tsunade's office. I, let's get this over with. I miss my cave. 
Naruto replied as he entered the Hokage's office. Who do you think you were to just barge in here without K.N.O. Her voice hitched in her throat as she took in the two people who entered her office. I is it really you? Are you back? She asked quietly. Both nodded, allowing her time to rein in her emotions. It's about damn time Bakas. She screeched, throwing a stack of papers at them. The paper went everywhere as she continued to throw objects from her desk. Do you know the trouble you caused me with your absence? The council has been barking down my neck for five years about not knowing where Arjun Shuriki is. Five years damn it. Well, not exactly the best of welcomes, but I figured I was gonna have a few of these. Do you need the report now or can it wait until tomorrow? I'm sure there are a few interested parties and I don't want to retell almost five years of my life more than once. Naruto asked, casually dodging the projectiles still being launched his way. Tsunade calmed herself after hearing the request. Yes, you would be correct in your assumptions. Shizune. Clear my schedule for tomorrow and the next day. Doesn't matter what I have booked this is more important. Naruto, you may do as you please with the rest of today. After your report is given you will have a month off. I'm sure you could use some rest, besides, I don't think I'll be able to send you away for at least that long anyways, she said with a wink. I, see you tomorrow Hokage-sama, Naruto said as he exited the office. Making his way downstairs and out of the tower, he mumbled to himself, how long until I'm discovered? Shikamaru wouldn't betray me, but word travels fast. He stopped short when he felt a large killer intent from behind him. Turning around he started profusely sweating. Um, hey there Kurunai-sensei. Long time huh? Fuck, that was the wrong thing to say. This is going to hurt. Long time? Long time? You left without even telling me what was going on. And all you have to say for yourself after five years is long time? She yelled. Steam could be seen coming from her ears. Technically it wasn't quite five years. He rebutted. A tick mark made itself present on her face. I should just keep my mouth shut. Naruto heard a deep rumbling after that last thought. If he didn't currently fear for his life he would have had a snarky reply to the laughter of Kurama. Kurunai slowly marched her way towards the redhead, causing him to panic and flail his arms in surrender. Wait 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 wait. I'll make it up to you. How about um, lunch? Yeah, I'll buy you lunch. Come on. I know you love Akimichi's barbecue. Naruto tried to get himself out of the punishment coming his way. Oddly enough Kurunai seemed to calm down as she reached him. All right, I won't kill you. But only because our other guest for lunch is definitely going to kill you, she said with an all too sweet smile and tone. Ah crap Naruto gulped. I'll go get her and bring her to meet you at Hakimichi's. Go get us a private room MMK? She requested, although Naruto knew enough to recognize a command when he heard one. With a nod he disappeared. Naruto had made his way to Akimichi's, picking up a couple stragglers on his way in the form of Shikamaru. Kakashi, and Sakura. After obtaining a private room for the group, he found himself fiddling constantly, unable to sit still. Relax, she's going to be happy to see you. Hell everyone is happy to see you after this long Naruto, Sakura said, trying to calm her nervous ex-teammate. He gulped as the door opened and Kurunai walked in. She took a seat beside Kakashi and turned her attention back towards the door. Stood frozen in the doorway was Hinata. Her gaze was locked on the redhead in the room, and it was deathly silent. Time slowed as Naruto opened his mouth, Hey, Hina-chan, he said softly. Hinata jumped and let out a knee before falling unconscious. Ah shit. Hinata? Naruto panicked and jumped to catch her. Well, could have been worse I guess eh? He asked with a nervous chuckle. Everyone just shook their heads. Troublesome, Shikamaru sighed out. He set Hinata down beside him as they ordered food. When the food was arriving, Hinata recovered from her fainting episode. She opened her eyes to the sight of a smiling Naruto conversing with the rest of the table. Slowly she sat up and quivered. Bringing her hand up to his face, the room fell silent. Tension filled the air as her hand feathered over Naruto's features. She let out a small gasp as he locked his gaze with hers. When her hand reached the scar on his left cheek, she began to tremble. She traced it down towards his chest, and a blush made itself present on her face. Slowly she put her whole hand on his left pectoral and roughly dragged it down towards his stomach. A cough broke her out of her trance and she looked around. Kakashi I smiled as Kurunai coughed to clear her throat. Should we vacate the room for a couple hours? She asked with a large grin. Hinata let out another eep but before she could faint from embarrassment Naruto slapped his hand onto her shoulder. A small ceiling matrix appeared and stopped her from going unconscious. Curious, everyone flicked their gaze towards the redhead. With a shrug he said, anti-fainting seal. Now let's eat. Kakashi and Kurunai both face faulted. 
Did he just use a forbidden torture and interrogation few in Jutsu on his girlfriend? Hinata slid over to Naruto, pressing her side up against him as the group began to eat. As the feasting died down conversation picked back up. So, tell me, what did I miss the past couple years? Naruto asked. He missed the glare Hinata shot him with his mistake on the time frame he was away. Well, most of the Janan from our age group are Jonin now. We still haven't recovered Sasuke's body, nor have we heard anything about him being alive. On a brighter note, the three Suna siblings, Gaara, Tamari, and Konkuro, had been coming to Konoha once every six months hoping that you have returned. Shikamaru answered. Sakura's face fell at the mention of Sasuke, which didn't go unnoticed by Naruto. I see, well if you haven't found his body, he's probably still kicking somewhere, going after his brother. He never was an easy one to kill, Naruto joked, trying to lighten the mood. So I'm the only Janan left huh? Guess it can't be helped. You'll have to teach me now Hina-chan, he joked, nudging her in the ribs with his elbow. She let out a squeak and nodded, not trusting herself to talk with the massive blush she had on her face. It seems her old habits have come back. Hopefully they disappear quicker than the first time. He pondered. Shikamaru grinned, despite how troublesome it is to have you back, you do bring entertainment wherever you go. Since I know you have a few weeks off, we should head to Suna sometime to see what the Kazekage wants from you. Naruto cocked an eyebrow at that. The Kazekage? What would the Kazekage want with me? I'm sure he wants to thank you for saving him from losing complete control and killing his sister. You were made aware Gar as the Kazekage weren't you? You saved Tamari from Gara? I was not aware of this Naruto-kun. Maybe you aren't such a nightmare after all. Why haven't I heard of this until now Shikamaru? Kur and I questioned. It was Gara's wish to keep what happened during the invasion quiet until he could properly thank Naruto for his actions. Shikamaru answered. Until now. Only Kiba, Shino, Hinata, the Suna siblings, Tsunade and Jiraiya were aware of the details concerning the mission to subdue Gara. Naruto unconsciously placed his hand on Hinata's thigh, giving it a squeeze for comfort. She laced her fingers in his and leaned closer towards him. Naruto didn't remember anything after protecting Tamari, but he knew Hinata hated the memory. I see, well I guess we'll have to ship this little nightmare off to Suna for a bit then won't we? Kurinai replied. She had noticed the reactions of Naruto and Hinata to the memory and decided not to continue her prying. The night carried on with small talk and sake. Long after the moon rose, everyone started to stagger home. Naruto and Hinata were walking hand in hand throughout the village. As they came closer to the Hyuga compound, he cast a questioning glance towards her. Hinata cast her eyes to the ground, shook her head and pushed herself closer to him. Understanding, he wrapped his arm around her shoulders, keeping their hands interlocked and guided her out of the village. It took the pair a bit longer to reach his cave than normal, considering their inebriated state. Walking through the entrance, Naruto gaped at the state. He expected it to be covered in dust, but he found he hardly recognized its place anymore. After walking through the genjutsu hiding the entrance, he found himself staring at a large open room with a fire pit in the middle surrounded by benches. What he found odd however was the missing crates and bed that he kept to one side. There was also a corridor at the back of the cave, Giving Hinata a perplexed look, she smiled before removing his trench coat. Tossing it on one of the benches, she noticed the white wrappings covering his arms. The white bandages wrapped from his hand up to his elbow on his right arm, leaving his fingers exposed, and they covered his entire left hand and arm up to his shoulder. How didn't I notice these before? Must be the sake I guess. She shook off her observant glance, only to notice Naruto seemingly lost in his observations of her attire as well. She had a short, dark gray jacket left open over top of a long sleeve blue shirt. The jacket had several black patches on it, and her headband was wrapped around her upper left arm. Her legs were covered in leggings matching her jacket, and she had a short black skirt on with several pockets for storage. She blushed at the thought of him observing her so openly. I hope he likes the change in my outfit. Kerr and I always encouraged me to be bolder. Hinata took her jacket off and tossed it onto the bench. D do you like my new outfit Naruakun? She asked fiddling with her hands as she did so. This seemed to break him from his trance, and he stepped forward. Taking her hands in as he looked her in the eyes and nodded, It suits you, Hina-chan. She smiled. It was a genuine and carefree smile. She felt as if a weight had been lifted off her shoulders. She had worried Naruto wouldn't express interest in her after being gone for so long, but his actions so far extinguished that worry. Come, let me show you what I've done with our home. She stopped abruptly with her back to him, frozen after what she said. Crap. He is going to freak out, I shouldn't have said th. Lead the way Hinata, huh? She looked back and found him smiling softly at her, why you mean you, 
you or he cut her off again. Don't fret so much, and show me what you've done to our cave Hina-chan. Oh okay, she stammered out, pulling him by the hand again into the quarter at the back of the cave. He noticed that the quarter split off to the left and then to the right. She pulled him down the hallway to the left, which led into a room with a dresser, several crates along the wall, and a large bed. It seems you weren't fond of my bed and decided to upgrade, eh? He asked with a smirk. She nodded as confirmation. More room, and this one is comfier. We can return here later, I want to show you something I discovered a year ago. Yanking on his arm again she dragged him out of the bedroom and down the right corridor. This one was a bit longer, but he also noticed that the air seemed to become humid. As he was pulled along, the hallway opened up into a small grotto. The air was so humid that it was visible. In the center of the room was a steaming pool of water, about 10 meters in diameter. Surrounding the edge of the water was thick green moss. Naruto stood with his mouth agape, marveling at the room Hinata had somehow carved into his dwelling. How did, when, what? He stuttered out. I used my Byakugan to look around one time about a year ago, and discovered a hollow with what seemed to be a pool in the middle. I decided that I would excavate a corridor to it like I had for the bedroom. This is what I found, a natural hot spring, now turn around, and no peeking. She ordered, huh? Naruto shot a confused glance at her but noticed she was starting to remove her skirt. Oh oh. Hinata, we don't, I mean, are you sure? Just be quiet and take off your clothes Naruto-kun. I want to relax in the water and the steam is thick enough to keep our modesty intact once we are in the water, she said not that I would mind anyways, I've waited for five years. Naruto just gulped and turned his back, starting to remove his bandages first. After removing his shirt he heard the sound of a body entering the water. Shedding his remaining garments he called out to make sure it was okay to enter the water, are you in? Yes, hurry up, the water is lovely, Hinata replied. Her voice sounded musical to Naruto. With a nod he turned towards the water and slowly sank in. He let loose a large sigh of relief as the hot water covered his body. Taking a couple steps out into the center of the pool, he found the depth to be just under his shoulders. You were right Hina-chan, the water is lovely. I can feel my aches melting away. When she didn't answer him. Naruto took a couple steps towards the side and moved to turn around but froze when he felt two hands snake their way under his arms and around his chest. He could feel her face press against his back between his shoulder blades. The water was now just under his pectorals, so she was submerged up to her neck. And Naruto, F forgive me for being so forward, Hinata spoke from behind him. Her voice was laced in an emotion he couldn't quite place. Is this love? Lust? Why is she apologizing for? Oh Naruto thought as he remembered the night before he left. Hinata pulled him towards the side of the pool and sat down on the bench carved into the stone. Keeping her face pressed into his back, she guided him down and pressed her body into his back. She picked up her legs and wrapped them around his waist. Naruto let out a little yelp as she maneuvered herself. He gulped as he felt her chest press into his back. I'm sorry for being so forward Naruto-kun, but Kurenai-sensei always tells me to be bolder, and I've been waiting five years. I, I wanted this before you left but you refused. I know why you refused, and I'm thankful you did, but my feelings haven't changed. I if you don't desire me, can we at least stay like this a while longer? Her voice was soft and pleading, but he could still notice the hint of something else. Naruto nodded and placed his hands on her legs. I'm not very good with my feelings, Hinata, but I know that I have feelings for you. You've held a place in my heart for a long time now. I'm just, I'm hesitant because of the name I've made for myself. The things I've had to do in Anbu, and the enemies of my family names, I don't want to cause you harm. You've seen the updated bingo books right? She nodded, choosing not to interrupt his confession, or whatever this was going to turn into. There are still many things I don't know about myself and my late family. I don't want to endanger you because of my past. With everything Uro Senen and I discovered during our travels, dangerous times are coming. You will find out when we give our briefing tomorrow, but I have a feeling I will be at the center of the storm to come. He trailed off, losing himself in thoughts of what was coming. You still don't get it do you Naruto-kun? I refuse to let you walk alone. Now that you've returned I won't let you disappear again. If a storm is coming, I will face it beside you. I want to walk beside you Naruto. Whatever it is that is coming, let me face it with you. You aren't alone anymore. Hinata slid herself out from behind him as she finished talking. Pushing him back into the wall of the pool, she threw her leg over his lap and straddled him. Looking him in the eyes with a fierce expression on her face, she asked again will you let me walk beside you? Naruto brought his hand up and cupped her cheek. As he ghosted his thumb under her eye, a tear fell from his own. He nodded slowly, never breaking eye contact. I will speak with your father tomorrow, 
and request his permission to pursue a relationship with you. Naruto paused, and with panic in his voice quickly added I if you'll have me that is. Hinata smiled as a tear fell from her eye. Bakashi chastised, leaning forward and capturing his lips with hers. She brought her hands up to the sides of his face as he wrapped his arms around her lower back. Naruto pulled her lower body tight against his, deepening the kiss. Hinata wrapped her arms around his head and lifted herself up slightly, giving herself the advantage of height as she pulled her lips from his. Their face millimeters apart, gasping for breath, Hinata lightly kissed him once more before allowing herself to slide down and sit on his lap. She nuzzled her face into his neck and wrapped her arms around his head again. I guess I can wait one more night, I have been waiting for five years anyways, she whispered. The couple stayed in each other's embrace in the grotto for a while, before Naruto noticed Hinata had fallen asleep. Smiling, he stood up, holding her in the same position with his hands under her thighs and carried her to bed. As Naruto woke up in the early morning, he found himself missing the warmth that was by his side throughout the cold winter night. Hearing sounds from the corridor, his curiosity got the best of him. He rose and put his pants on, venturing towards the main area of his cave. As he entered, a sweet aroma hit his nostrils. Mmm, whatever you're making smells delicious Hina-chan. He not a twirled around, startled by his entrance. Oh, Naruto-kun, did you sleep well? I think we overslept a bit, so I'm making some cinnamon buns for breakfast. Hurry and go get dressed so we can get to the briefing faster, Naruto sighed, before turning around. I aye captain, he said with a wave over his shoulder as he made his way back to his bedroom. The couple ate quickly and then headed out towards Hokage Tower. After leaving the cave, Naruto unsealed a peculiar kunai and began spinning it on his finger. The kunai had few injutsu markings on the handle, and the blade was three-pronged. The middle prong resembled a normal kunai, but the two side prongs were very short and stuck out at a 45 degree angle from the main blade. Naruto continued on with his right hand in his pocket and his left spinning the mysterious kunai. He was whistling a laid back tune with his eyes closed. Hinata again noticed the bandages and remembered she forgot to ask about them last night. Naruto kun, why do you wear bandages on your arms now? I have numerous seals on my arms, and I use the bandages to cover them. If I ever come across another few in Jutsu Master, they might be able to recognize the seals, therefore I keep them hidden. Also, it looks cool, he replied, smirking and tossing her a wink. Hinata rolled her eyes at that, typical boy, so what is with this kunai? It isn't like anything I've seen before, she asked. It is the same design as my father's. The seal on the handle allows me to use his signature technique. Do you want to see it? He asked. Smirking when she nodded her head, he pulled her tight against him. With a wink he said, hold on. In a flash the pair disappeared, materializing inside Tsunade's office. She spit out her coffee at the sudden intrusion, what the fuck? Hinata? Naruto? You're an hour late, she bellowed. Turning to Jiraiya, who was currently sitting on a couch in the office with Shizun standing beside him she asked was that what I think it was? Jiraiya smiled widely, giving her an answer. I see, well now that you two lovebirds have arrived, let's get to the conference room. Everyone else is waiting, Tsunade commanded. As she led her entourage down to the briefing room, she took this opportunity to warn Naruto. People of great importance are here for this report Naruto. It would be an opportune time to come forward about everything concerning your past. With that, she opened the door and led the group inside. Once inside, Hinata took a seat beside Tsunade and Shizuna as Naruto and Jiraiya moved towards the front. Looking around, Naruto noticed that the full shinobi side of the council was present, including all clan heads. Several Jonin were in the back, and a few other people he did not recognize. With a sigh, Naruto looked at Jiraiya. So, you were me? He asked. Jiraiya let out a chuckle before waving his hand. With a second, more pronounced sigh, Naruto turned to the gathered crowd. I'm sure you all know who I am, and that I have been gone for the past five years. Before I get into the details of my absence, there are a couple things I think I should clear up. As you know, I am the Jin Shuriki of the Kyubi. What you are most likely not aware of is that I am the only heir to me not Onami Kaze and Kushina Uzumaki, he paused at the uproar, waiting patiently for it to die down. As was the third Hokage's will, I hid this information from all but a very select few. Now that I am past the age of 16, I will be claiming the rights of Nami Kaze and Uzumaki clan head. A second uproar occurred, but one question rang out louder than the others. Hyashi stood and shouted out his question again. How do we know your claims are true? You may resemble Kushina in your looks, but nothing about you looks like an Amikaze. Naruto sighed for seemingly the umpteenth time today, I hoped I wouldn't have to do this, but oh well. He stopped spinning his kunai, 
showing it to the gathered people. Still not enough? All right. Naruto tossed the kunai into the wall at the back of the room. He let a smirk grace his face and disappeared in a flash. Before anyone could make a move, he spoke up from the back of the room, proof enough? The room whirled around and Naruto caught the various emotions passing across the crowd's faces. Confusion, anger, rage, regret. Tsunade stood, planning to end this waste of time. Shizun, please show Hyashi the document I requested you to bring. Nodding, Shizun procured the scroll, with Hiruzen's wax seal on it, and handed it to the Hyuga head. Hyashi took it, and with a confused look he opened it. Silence captured the room as he read through it. A shocked look crossed his face as he reread the document. It would appear that what the boy claims is true. This is signed by Lord Third himself, and confirms everything this boy has said. Hyashi rolled up the scroll and handed it to Shikaku Nara. Care to confirm my claims Shikaku? No, I was made aware of these circumstances the day he was born. Turning to the rest of the room he raised his voice. Does anyone want further verification of the claims? Receiving silence he addressed Naruto. You may continue your report, now that this uproar is over. I. Now that my claims have been verified, I will move on to my five years of absence. Naruto delved into his and Jiraiya's extended leave from Konoha. They left out several discoveries Naruto had made in his training, deeming them unnecessary for the crowd gathered today. The report lasted for the full eight hours Tsunade had scheduled and she dismissed everyone for the night. As people filed out of the room, a few stayed behind. Shikaku and Hyashi both approached Naruto. Shikaku spoke first, I know you haven't finished your recount of your journey, but I wanted to ask you if you intended to stay in the Anbu or not now that you have returned. If you decide to leave the Anbu once again, I would make the motion to put you through the Jonin promotion exams. Take your time and think about it, I'll see you tomorrow. Naruto nodded in thanks. Looking over towards Hyashi, Naruto gave him an inquisitive look. I imagine that since you stayed behind you have something you wish to speak with me about. It is a coincidence as I have something I wish to ask you, but it is better done in the privacy of your estate. Would you like to save what you have to say for later tonight, or is it urgent? Naruto asked. Hyashi was surprised with the boy's manner of speaking. He didn't show him respect, nor disrespect, and he was quick to the point. I suppose I could hold off. If you wish to speak with me in private I will expect your arrival at my clan's compound soon. Have he not I escort you to my office? Hyashi replied, Very well, see you soon Hyuga-sama. This caught Hyashi flat-footed again. He didn't expect to be addressed respectfully by the boy whom had just seconds earlier neglected to address him in any manner of respect. Hyashi kept his surprise well hidden behind his mask of stone however, and took his leave. Well, I guess the interrogation continues eh? Would you please do me the honor of escorting me Hinata-sama? Naruto jested. It earned him an elbow to the ribs and a smile from the girl. Turning around to address Tsunade and Shizune, he added, Well I'm off to the lion's den. See you tomorrow, maybe. He was pulled from the room by Hinata as he smirked at the remaining people in the room. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.